From Aloha Stadium on Oahu, Hawaii, it's Western Athletic Conference football. Tonight, the University of Hawaii Warriors open their home conference schedule against the University of Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Leahy along with Doug Violetti. Welcome to our coverage of college football. Two teams that went to bowl games last year have stumbled out of the blocks this year. Tulsa comes to Honolulu with a 1-3 and three record on the season. Hawaii is 0-2. Tulsa is led by quarterback James Killian, and he is multidimensional. Evidence of this, last year's game against Hawaii, he passed for 106 yards, ran for 115 yards, and on trick plays, he was the receiver for 35 yards as Tulsa came from behind to win in Tulsa 27 to 16. Doug, when you look at Hawaii going into this game, they've got to improve on their defense. Otherwise, it could be a very long night. No arguments there, Jim. If you look at the game two weeks ago against Rice, 16 missed tackles for however many yardage that was. If they, hope, if they have any hope of winning tonight, they've got to do a lot better than that. On the offensive side of the ball, Timmy Chang continues to light up the board. Statistically, he's having a great year. Five touchdowns, no interceptions, but the most important statistic of all is the one in the win column. And right now, Hawaii stands with two losses. And for Timmy Chang, he has said he would rather win than break that record. For Hawaii, that defense is the real bugaboo going into this game. They have got to perform a lot better. And for Timmy Chang, he's got to make many more connections. Hawaii was there in the first two games in the fourth quarter. And the coaches feel they're not that far from putting it all together. But so far, they have not done so. When we come back, we'll have the kickoff. Hawaii against Tulsa from Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. Football is your inside source for all pro and college gridiron news. The hardest hitting football show in the biz. Patrick O'Neill and our insider Jay Glazer break all the stories before anyone else. When I first broke it, people were telling me, yes, this is going to cause such a heated debate. We'll take you inside the huddle and behind the scenes for all the pigskin action. Totally Football, weeknights on FSN. Welcome back, everyone. This is uh, the last game on this football Saturday, and it will start Hawaiian time. That's uh, very late on the East Coast. In fact, it starts at midnight on the East Coast, and then as you come across in the Hawaiian Islands, it is 6 or just a little after 6 o'clock as this uh, final college football game throughout the country is just about to get underway. Let's go down to Russell Yamanoha on the field. Russ. And thanks a lot, Jim. You know, the Hawaii football team still trying to find its groove in an 0-2 start. But they haven't played at home in over a month. So Hawaii struggling out of the gates, as is Tulsa, 1-3 and three to start their season. Both teams need a win tonight. I had a chance to talk to Hawaii head coach June Jones. He spoke about going up against Tulsa tonight. You know, they beat us last year, and they're a good football team. Uh, they've lost uh, uh, three games, uh, one of which... Uh, they could have kind of like ours, could have gone either way. Uh, but, you know, they, they played a tough schedule and they played really hard. That's head coach June Jones speaking in our Geico quote of the game. A tough start for Hawaii so far, as I said, at 0-2. They hope to pick up a big win tonight if they can get it against the Hurricane. Back to you. Okay, thanks, Russ. Hawaii 0-2 and the Hurricane, the Golden Hurricane of Tulsa, is now 1-3. As you look at June Jones. June Jones in his sixth year, he has a record of 40 and 27. And in the WAC, he is 24 and 16 as the coach of the University of Hawaii. So the Warriors starting to emerge from the tunnel. June Jones losing last year to this uh, gentleman, Steve Cragthorpe. He is in his second year. And he is the 26th head football coach in Tulsa history. Last year, he led Tulsa 
to the biggest turnaround in the nation with an 8-5 record and second place in the Western Athletic Conference. He took his team to the Humanitarian Bowl against Georgia Tech of the Atlantic Coast Conference. So Steve Craigthorpe disappointed in the way his team has started, but he's coming off a victory against a 1-AA team last week, Southwest Missouri State, in which Tulsa scored 35 points in the second half. So he at least has a win. June Jones still looking for his first win, and he is again on his home field. He has not played here since almost a month ago as he has had two buys and a road game. Hopefully, he hopes his team can put it together tonight against Tulsa. This presentation of NCAA football is sponsored by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. So Hawaii will receive tonight as they are introducing the players coming out of the tunnel. In the meantime, Tulsa getting ready to go, but they have to stand on the sidelines and watch this. Tonight, as we mentioned, Dougie, when you look at this particular game, Hawaii's defense is the question mark. That defense has not performed well, especially in the last game against Rice. Right, well, we talked about the inexperience. They have a lot of freshmen coming. The two top backups on the defensive line are true freshmen. So the inexperience excuse, though, Jim, is starting to go away as we move further into the season because they get more experience as they play more. But coming into the fourth quarter, those linemen are getting tired. Hawaii's come into the fourth quarter of both games and have, has uh, taken over the lead, but has not been able to hang on to it because the defense has not been able to stop the, uh, the opposing offense. When you talk to the defensive players, they are the first to admit that they have not tackled well and that drills on the Manoa campus this week have been dedicated to tackling better. When you also look at Ikaika Kernan and Tanovasa Moy, two of the linebackers, they are starting tonight, at least they are penciled in, but they have elbow injuries, and that attacks that 100% physicality that you need as a linebacker, and, and how they tackle tonight will go a long way to Hawaii's success because of the fact that here you have James Killian, who rushed for 115 yards against Hawaii last year in Tulsa. He passed for 106 yards, so he is the kind of quarterback that is unafraid to tuck it and run. And when he runs, he is a force because he is 6'4", 215. That's a load. And, uh, and I think if you see the linebacker struggling earlier in the game, uh, June Jones will not hesitate to bring in uh, Lincoln Manutai, or I think Paul Luther Carroll might be healthy, or even the true freshman, C.J. Allen Jones, who they're really high on, got a lot of speed. They might bring them in if the linebackers that are starting the game start to struggle. George Lumpkin is the defensive coordinator for Hawaii. There you see him on the left. George Lumpkin has been at the University of Hawaii off and on for over 30 years. So his defense certainly will have to answer the call tonight. Hawaii will receive. Tulsa will defend the north goal. Deep for Hawaii is Ross Dickerson, 5'11", sophomore. And Dickerson standing alone at about the one-yard line. Gerard Tracy will kick off for Tulsa. So as the sun sets behind us over Pearl Harbor, another magnificent day in the Hawaiian Islands comes to a close. And Tulsa squares off against Hawaii at Aloha Stadium. Waiting for the whistle. And here we go. So Tulsa against Hawaii just getting underway. Coming up to take the kick is Dickerson. Now he backs up, takes it on the goal line. One foot in the end zone. He'll come out over the 15. And he is able to advance the ball to about the 17-yard line. And it will be first down for Hawaii. Jermaine Hope making the stop for Tulsa on the special teams. Tim Chang is the quarterback for Hawaii. He comes in with 72 receptions for 665 yards. 
five touchdowns. He has no interceptions. He starts the game tonight with 13,479 career yards in passing. He needs only five yards to pass Phillip Rivers of North Carolina State. He's with the San Diego Chargers now. He's had a 13 484. So it is first down. They put it on the 18 for Hawaii. Tim Chang, the quarterback in motion, is Se'e Pomele. And the ball is given to Brewster. Breaks outside, turns the corner at the 30 to the 34. 14-yard gain on the first play from scrimmage. And Hawaii starts on the ground. Tonight's starting lineups are sponsored by Enjoy Snacks. It's time to enjoy life. This offensive line, they've mixed and matched because of the injury to the uh, center. Fa'ave, Acera, Satale, Moinoa, Eaton, and Inferrero. Timmy Chang is the quarterback. The receivers, Brenton Comine, Chad Owens, Epumele, Jason Rivers, and Michael Brewster is a single setback. In motion again is Pomele. First down, the ball at the 34-yard line. Again, it is Brewster to the 40. Brewster close to the first down. 10-yard game. Brandon Lohr made the stop. Here are the defensive starters for Tulsa. Brandon Lohr, Brandon Jones, and Josh Walker in that three-man defensive front. The linebackers, Nick Bunting, Nelson Coleman, Michael Leggett, who leads the team in tackles with 35, and Bobby Blackshire. Blackshire will also act as a defensive back. And in the defensive backfield, Jermaine Hope, Clint Roundtree, Shannon Carter, and Oliver Fletcher. First down, the ball at the 44-yard line. Triple wide receiver to the left. Chang throws. That's complete. Pomelo at midfield. And Pomelo finally swallowed up as he gets to the 49-yard line. We have a penalty flag. And also a helmet has come flying off. Clint Roundtree, number 18, and Oliver Fletcher, number 9, made the stop. And I said Pomelo. It was not. It was uh, Chad Owens. I stand corrected. Owens number two, Pomelo number seven. In fact, for Chad Owens, that is his 24th catch. He came into the game leading the nation in catches per game with 11.5. So the penalty goes against Hawaii. Now, apparently, it's uh, interference. We'll have to uh, wait and see here. And the referee tonight is Robert Cameron. Offensive pass interference on the offense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Hawaii. Repeat, first down. So that penalty will move the ball back inside the 30-yard line all the way to the 29. That's a huge penalty. 15 yards. It is now first and 25 for Hawaii. At their own 29-yard line. Hoy started very well. Two good runs by Brewster, one of 16 yards and one of 10 yards. So Hawaii comes out with the double wide receivers. First and 25. Paul Mele overloads the left side. Chang loops it, tries to find Owens, and overthrows him. That'll bring up second down and 25 yards to go. And it's nice to see Chad, I mean, Wes Kalikipi in there, number 16, uh, the big back for Hawaii, back in there blocking. Chang had good time that time uh, on that uh, possession. He just overthrew his receiver. Kalikipi had two touchdown runs against Tulsa last year when that game was played in Tulsa. And Hawaii lost that game. They were leading at one point 16 to 3, and they lost at 27 to 16. Hawaii was shut down for three quarters in that game. Pomele again goes in motion. Second and 25 from the 29. Shovel pass. Kareem Kipi, 40. Chase down from behind over the 45 all the way to the 48. Michael Ledette finally caught him. Excellent block by Uriah Moynoa on the play. 17-yard game. The defensive line goes on a stunt here. The uh, left defensive end comes all the way around. Number 95, Josh Walker. You see them right in the picture. It makes Wes Kalipi cut back and then number 27 Michael Ledet uh, just chasing not stopping making a tackle from behind good to see the big guy back he's been out with a knee injury and it's good to see him start to power his way on the ground third down seven and a half 
Ball is on Hawaii's own 47 yard line. Chang looking for the first down marker. Now he's going to throw deep out in front. Rivers. And he leaps and catches the ball at the 15 yard line. It's a terrific catch by Jason Rivers. What a catch. 34 yard pass to Rivers. That is the longest reception of the season. Rivers, the sophomore out of Waipaho in St. Louis School. That's his 10th reception of the season, and he goes over 100 yards. And what happened, Jim, the reason that worked that time, Tulsa crowded the line of scrimmage because of Wes Kiliakipi and the running that Hawaii's done the first few plays. And uh, when Jason Rivers broke to the middle, there was no safety there to cover him. Brewster has come back into the game for Kiliakipi. Triple wide receiver all bunched up to the left side. Ball is given to Brewster looking for the hole. He gets one block and then gets to the 11 yard line from the line of scrimmage just inside the 15. Randy Duncan, number 662. Uh, he is a true freshman out of Mesquite, Texas, made the tackle. And the block on the play made again by Uriah Moynoa. Moynoa playing center. He's usually a guard. And Uriah out of Iolani. If you look at the, the coach. June Jones in on the play at three, second down. Hawaii can get a first down just inside the five yard line. 1147 left to play here, just underway. Hawaii trying to score on their first drive. Looking into the end zone. Now throwing. That is incomplete. It was intended for Komine. You could almost see and feel Chang go through his progressions. Yep. Nice job of Chang. First of all, nice job of the offensive line of picking up the rushers. Tulsa came up, showed blitz. They ended up rushing four guys. The offensive line picked it up nicely. Chang stepped up into the pocket to buy himself a few more seconds and then threw a catchable pass. Not a great pass, but a catchable. Komine is flanked to the far side and to the near side is Rivers. The slots also follow him out to the left. Brewster is the setback. Big play here, third down. Chang with time throw sideline pattern that is incomplete and good defense on the play by Jermaine Hope that will bring up fourth down. I mean they're trying to make a sensational catch on the sideline. It's a terrific job of coverage by uh, Jermaine Hope. Um, you know with uh, that player right there Jermaine Hope uh, the receiver was hoping he would back up more to run him further into the end zone. And when he turned around, Jermaine Holt made a nice break on the ball, came up for the tackle. Justin Ayat trying the field goal. It is a 20, 24 yard, 20, excuse me, 29 yard. Ball is placed by Moon. And kicking the ball is Ayat. Away gets on the scoreboard first, 3 2 nothing with 11 29 left to play in the first quarter. Count the ways you win with the Hyundai Accent. Number one, the reliable Hyundai Accent is the number one seller in its class. Two, the Accent's many features include standard front side impact airbags for added safety. And three, award-winning quality that lets Hyundai offer America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. Don't buy another car before you check out the Hyundai Accent starting at just $95.44. With Hyundai, you win. Get the fuel-efficient Hyundai Accent starting under $10,000 at your local Hyundai dealer. This weekend on Fox NFL Sunday, we go behind the scenes with Michael Vick and show you the crazy life of a superstar. Plus, Ray Lewis goes 10 yards with TV. Then, two of the league's most legendary franchises meet in an NFC Classic. Kurt Warner and the Giants take on Brett Favre and the explosive Packers. Fox NFL Sunday, this weekend presented in high definition. Next week on the best damn sports show, period. The Philadelphia Eagles, Terrell Owens, coach Mike Ditka, and guest host C.C. Sabathia. Plus, Billy Bob Thornton, Michael Strahan, and where are they now with Jim Abbott? And Chuck Norris, the stars of Friday Night Lights, and Terry Bradshaw. Next week at 8 and 11. Hawaii getting on the board first. They lead three to nothing. Officially, it's a 28-yard field goal 
by Ayat. And Ayat will kick off for Hawaii. Ashlyn Davis, and you're looking at Donnie Johnson. Johnson, 5'9", sophomore out of Dallas, Texas, and Ashlyn Davis deep. The ball is kicked deep. It will go to Davis at the goal line. Davis gets out over the 20 to the 21. Kaika Blackburn there to make the tackle for Hawaii. He was the first to him. Lono Manners then followed, and it will be first down for Tulsa. There you see James Killian. Killian has thrown for more yards than Timmy Chang coming into this game. 711. He's thrown for five touchdowns and five interceptions. Killian can also run. Single setback is you will perish. This is Parrish getting the call, eluding one tackler, and then trying to get around the end. Parrish is uh, tackled by Mel Purcell. This is the Tulsa starters on offense. That offensive line, Dannenauer, Black, Wareheim, Stoneham, and Parrott. James Killian is the quarterback. Caleb Blankenship and Garrett Mills are the tight end. Montes Colton and Ashlyn Davis, also wide receivers, and Parrish is the running back. In motion is Blankenship. Second down and seven. And Killian is hit and dropped to the turf by Leonard Peters. The ball comes out, but the referee says no, down by contact. It will go as an incomplete pass. Pass was, the uh, arm was coming forward. Take another look. Leonard Peters just erupted here. Leonard Peters came up to cover the tight end. He came up onto the line of scrimmage to cover the tight end. When the tight end went in motion, Peters didn't follow him. He came in on a blitz, and Killian just didn't see him. Crowd reacting to the replay, but the uh, referee said no. His arm was moving forward. Third down and seven, and the ball is at the 24-yard line. Parrish, single setback. Back to pass, throws over the middle, throws behind the intended receiver, Mills, up on the 32-yard line. That's incomplete. Here's the defensive starters now for Hawaii. Mel Purcell, Louis Funga, Matt Funga, and Kila Kamakabibo Ole in that uh, defensive front. And then the linebackers, Chad Kapanui, Ikaika Kernan, and Lincoln Manutai. And Arab Elamimian, Leonard Peters, Lono Manners, and Kenny Patton starting in the, the backfield. So it is fourth down, and Chad Owens has come in to return it. Chris Kindred will kick. Kindred is fourth in whack punting, averaging 40.3. Kindred with time, gets it away. Line drive, coming over is Owens, lets it bounce on the 32-yard line. It comes inside the 30 and will die at the 29. It will be first down for Hawaii on the 29-yard line. 47-yard punt by Kindred. 10 minutes and 30 seconds left here in the first quarter. So we have seen, remember what we said, when we started this, that defense is going to be tested. They passed the first test with flying color. Absolutely, Jim. Uh, and now Tulsa's defense, which is also young defense. I think the reason both of these teams have struggled is that they've had young defenses. Tulsa's got it, got its share of freshmen out there, and both defenses have, start, have struggled. Now it's their turn to uh, step up to the plate. We'll see what happens. First and 10 for Hawaii from the 29. Wes Kili'ikipi in the backfield along with Kim Chan. And the whistle blows. Could have some movement before the, the snap. Ball start, number seven, offense, five yard penalty. Still first down. Se'e Pomele. So Pomele moving. You see that does not please June Jones at all. And it's now first down and 15. And the ball is back to the 24 yard line. 3-0, Hawaii, first quarter. Chang to throw with time. Sideline pattern. That is complete to Owens. Owens is wiggled to the turf out over the 30-yard line, out of bounds at about the 34. And the offensive line doing a terrific job of blocking. There's been a little bit of a, a change up here. Moinoa is still the center. 
Uh, Phil Kaufman has come in as right guard, and Brandon Eaton has stepped out to the right tackle spot. And uh, they're give, giving Timmy Chang a lot of, lot of time there. He, he's got the opportunity to make all these reads. Here we see here, he throws the ball about 35 yards to get seven. Second down, a long five. Kili Kipi breaking tackles to the 40, and he has the first down, and he's still standing up. Boy, it took a team effort to halt his progress. Yeah. Wes, Kili Kipi. I, I tell you, Wes just brings such uh, a presence to that offense. When we talk about trying to get the defenses to come out of their zone and come up and play a tighter, honest defense. Wes Kelly Keepy might be the answer to that. But when he gets piled up like that, I like to see him just go down. Instead of giving four or five guys free shots at him, if you're not going anywhere, I'd like to see him just go down. Kelly Keepy, 37 carries, 247 yards, and six touchdowns last season. First down for Hawaii at the 40-yard line. In motion is Poe Merrill. Chang. Quick pattern. Pomelli leaping catch off the hands. Beautiful catch. Gathering it in. Get on the play of 13, and that's a first down. Nice job of Timmy Chang and Pomelli being on the same page because the guy that's supposed to cover Pomelli, uh, number 27, Michael Ledet, came in on a blitz. Pomelli just went to the open area. And Timmy Chang hit him right where, where he was. Chang now four for seven, 79 yards. First down. The ball inside Tulsa territory, just out the outside the 46-yard line. In motion is Comino as they overload the right side. Chang looking, throws. That is dropped by Comino. Comino had it. He knew it. He was open. The ball was delivered right there, and as he turned, as he turned, his eyes left the ball. And it popped away from him. Incomplete, second down and 10. And you hope Komina gets that fixed because the second ball that's touched his hands that he hasn't come down with. Last week, Hawaii Warriors dropped seven passes, including four in the end zone. Well, I should say last week, two weeks ago, the last game against Rice. Triple wide receiver now to the right, all bunched up in a triangle. Chang looking, throws. That is incomplete to Owens. Ball was there, and the ball escapes. Third down and 10. Boys have trouble with the deep patterns. We saw an example of a deep pattern earlier. The 39-yard pass to Rivers, but those have been few and far between for this offense. The way he has chipped away with very short passes. Rivers is now flanked to the left, slotted inside of Rivers. He is Owens. Pomino to the right. Pomelli inside him. Chang now throws over the middle, and Rivers cannot hold on at the 40-yard line. And that will bring up fourth down. And we will see Kurt Milne punting for Hawaii. 12 punts on the season, 38.1 yard average. He is seventh in the Western Athletic Conference in punting. And that was three drop balls in a row, Jim. He just can't explain why that happens. In practice, they catch everything. And then in the game tonight and last week, they come out here and uh, just struggle keeping their hands on the ball. Jermaine Hope is deep for Tulsa, second team all whack. Coming out of the competition of last season. Milne. Excellent hang time. They will let it drop. Drops on the five and goes into the end zone. Omega Hogan was down there, but he couldn't find the ball that landed Time behind out. him. 46 yard punt. Time out. And no return. When we come back, Media. Hawaii will still lead three to nothing. Tulsa will have it at their 20. It's back. It's bigger than ever. It's the Toyota Tent Event. The biggest truck clearance in Toyota history is going on now under the tents at all 58 Toyota dealers in Southern California. 
Get an incredible zero APR on any new 04 Tundra, including the all-new Double Cab. Or choose 2,000 cash back on new 04 V8 Tundras and 1,000 cash back on new 04 V6 Tundras. The Toyota Den event ends soon. See your Toyota dealer today. reservations and Vegas rooms from $29 to $299, book your trip with the Vegas experts at Vegas.com now. Vegas.com, it's who you know. FSM West 2, home of the high school football game of the week since 1997, is going into their vault to bring you a blast from the past. It's the 1998 CIF Division I Championship game. Long Beach Poly had already established themselves as a force to be reckoned with, but modern day's Matt Budagood was out to prove that the Monarchs could march on both sides of the field. High school football classics, modern day, Long Beach Poly, Sunday at 8 on FSN West 2. Let's take a look at this uh, Budweiser fact. And that's third down situations for Hawaii. Third and long. Hawaii in third down situations. One to three yards. They are four for seven. Medium seven for ten. And long. They are 0 for 12. 8.26 left to play in the first quarter as we resume Tulsa's second possession of the game. First down from the 20. Killian Rowland with time. He may run. Now he throws. It's incomplete. He threw that ball inside of Mills. Mills was double covered. And Killian tried to find an open space for Mills to make the catch coming back to the inside, but the ball whizzed by him incomplete. The good pressure by Hawaii's defensive front. Mill, uh, Killian rolls out to buy himself some more time. But Leonard Peters right there uh, uh, defending the tight end, doing a good job. Tony Akpan has come into the game as a defensive end, number 90. Akpan out of Nigeria. That is given on a sweep to Davis. Davis trying for the first time, leaps over Alono Manners at about the 27 yard line and ends up about two yards short. Manners able to plug up the interference in front of Ashland Davis. For Davis, that was only his fourth carry of the season. And Ashlyn Davis coming from his wide receiver spot, running that sweep on the outside. Uh, Killian just drops back, fakes the handoff to the running back, uh, Parrish, and then gives the ball to uh, Davis, who makes a nice run. Third down, short yardage. Third down and two. Colton, number 84, flanked to the near side. Ball is given up the middle, and with it is Parrish, and he's able to struggle enough for the first down. Out over the 30. Ikaka Kernan, number 51, there to make the tackle for Hawaii. And that is a first down for Tulsa. Yeah, there's a lot of misdirection in this offense, Jim. You see number 13 there come across from his wide receiver spot. They fake the handoff to him and they give it to the running back, Parrish, who uh, just goes for it for the first down. A lot of misdirection. It's really confusing. The linebackers have to really be on the ball and watch their keys. First down from the 32. Davis comes in motion for Tulsa. Killian again rolling. Now throws, and he throws it away. Excellent defense by Hawaii that time. Colton tried to go long, number 84, up the near sideline, but it never really materialized. Killian couldn't pinpoint him as he rolled. Leonard Peters with good pressure. Yeah, good, Second down and ten. Good coverage by Hawaii's defense. They're going to mix it up themselves too. They're going to they're going to try some zone and uh, try some man coverage. That time uh, Leonard Peters comes up and he sees that he could put pressure on the quarterback and he goes for it. 707 left to play in the first quarter. Hawaii leading three to nothing. Second and ten for Tulsa at their own 32 yard line. Triple wide receiver now to the right for the Golden Hurricane. Killian in the shotgun. Single setback with him. And as the ball is snapped. The whistle blows. We could have delay of game. Well, the ball can be snapped. Delay of game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. And we talked about the different looks that Hawaii's going to try. That time they had seven men on the line of scrimmage, and it really uh, 
made Killian think about what he was going to do and uh, didn't snap the ball in time. It's really become a chess match between uh, the two defenses. I mean, so many different looks. Second down and 15. The ball back now at the 27-yard line. Coming into the game is Daryl Wimberly, and he is flanked to the far side. In motion comes Landrum, number 13. With it is Killian. Killian in trouble. Throws over the middle. That is complete to Parrish. And Parrish is rolled down after a very short game. Louis Funga diagnosed and went over and dropped him. This a terrific job by TJ Moy of coming up, reads the, the screen, comes up to stop the line, the running back, gets in the stand there, try to make a move. There's uh, Moy right there, and then Louis Funga comes over from his defensive tackle spot and just plants him. So Tanabasa Moy and Louis Funga combining. Third down, long yardage, third down, and about 14. Killian fakes. Killian in trouble, being chased out of the pocket. Could be a broken play. Now throws and throws it out of bounds. Could be a broken play because Killian, in his behavior, tried to give the ball to somebody and there was no one there. And we have a penalty flag upfield. And we probably will have an ineligible receiver call. We'll see. Mel Purcell is down on both knees, slowly trying to get to his feet. Mel Purcell has had uh, ankle injuries from the start of training camp. And that is not a good sign, Jim. Mel Purcell is uh, one of the main Ineligible guys. downfield on the offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Here comes June Jones. I wonder if there was a chop block involved here, well, a the, cut block. The ineligible receiver downfield was number 63, Derek Wareheim, the center. And he's the one that blocked, however he blocked Mel Purcell, whether it was a cut block or not, it's, it's hurt him. So you see, you see uh, June Jones, he comes out, he's working the officials here. It's like, I guess you could have a baseball manager come out and he's working the umpires and the same thing right here with June Jones saying, uh, okay, you have to watch those things. He has always been very much upset with uh, that kind of block. Now he doesn't like it. And downfield, when you're going downfield, that is a cheap block. So it will be fourth down. And Chris Kindred, who had a 47-yard punt his first time, will come in and punt now for Tulsa deep will be Chad Owens. Hawaii leading three to nothing. Six minutes and 17 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. 28-yard field goal by Ayat is the difference in the game. Kindred boots it. Here comes Owens, takes it, and is rolled out of bounds immediately. Took it on about the 34, and he's out of bounds at about to the 35, 39-yard kick. When we come back, Hawaii will have it, leading three to nothing. Time out, media. Experience the future of sports. Phenom Factory has the original hit-proof compression suit. One piece, one pound, one place to get it. Visit us online or call Phenom Factory. The future of sports equipment is here. You told your girlfriend she couldn't move in. You didn't want furry covers on your toilet seat. But your girlfriend can cook a mean breakfast. Maybe furry covers aren't so bad. The Loaded Breakfast Burrito. New at Carl's Jr. Without us, some guys would starve. Andy, you can cut the tension with a knife. Here we are. First up, the sporting group entry, a breed that originated in Europe. Oh, now this big fella's from the working group. Bet he's got quite an appetite. I bet he does, Andy. And here's the CRV, an extremely versatile breed. You find them on farms, ranches. And the city. Yes, of course, the city. And look at him responding to the crowd. Andy, there's a good look at the Honda CRV. And now for the toy group. Always a crowd favorite. The power to a 
attract? How will the pyramid affect you? Luxor, Las Vegas. You're watching FSN West 2. I invite you to check out BigIslandCandies.com to view their latest specials. Big Island Candies, home of the original chocolate dipped shortbread cookie. Good news for Hawaii fans in volleyball. The Rainbow Wahine playing at Nevada Arena today had to go to five, but they were able to survive it. And they are now 12 and 0 on the season. Wes Kalikipi is a single setback in motion as Pomele first down. From the 36-yard line, Kali Kipi spinning out to the 40 to the 41. Nick Bunting was there to haul his progress. Bunting, a 6'1", 225-pound sophomore from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and a good block by Samson Satelli, number 64, and Tala Isera. Isera from Haula on the other side of the island of Oahu. That's your old stomping ground, huh? It's the beautiful side of the island of Oahu. Second down and about six for Hawaii. The ball just short of the 41-yard line. Triple wide receiver to the left. Man-to-man -man coverage. Chang looking, throws, and throws high and behind Pomele. That'll bring up second down for Hawaii. It stops the clock with 5.22. Left the play here in the first quarter. Earlier, before the game, it, it was like an Army-Navy game when the Corps of Cadets come out onto the field. The 29th Infantry Brigade came out. And uh, they are from Hawaii, all of them. And they are leaving tomorrow for training at Fort Bliss in El Paso. At halftime, we'll be able to show you some of that. Chang now four for 11, 79 yards. Third down, and the whistle blows. We may have a delay of game. Delay of game, offense, five yard penalty, still third down. Boy, that's hard to figure. That is hard to figure. Now it is third down and 10. Chang going over to check with uh, June Jones. So another third down conversion here. Hawaii 38% in third down conversions coming in uh, to this game. Ball is given to Kay Chiki. Oh, big hole. He's at the 50. Has the first down and is ridden out of bounds at the 43-yard line. 21 yards. He rampaged up the sideline. Hey, and that was just good running, good blocking, and a terrific call by Hawaii. Nobody expected them to run the ball. Everybody walked up onto the line. The linemen locked on, pushed their guys out of the way, and Kelly Kibi just ran to daylight. There's nobody in front of him. Samson Satelli pulling to the far side. We may have an injury to Kelly Kibi. We'll be watching that. Russell Yamanoha on it on the sidelines. He appears to be okay as he is up. We'll check with Russ a little later. First down for Hawaii. And the ball is on the 43. Ball is given to Brewster. And Brewster is able to knife inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Clint Roundtree was there to make the stop for Tulsa. 5.06 left to play here in the first period. Hawaii leading 3 to nothing. And I like the play calling that uh, June Jones is doing right now. That time, right guard um, pulled over from his right guard spot and knocked the defensive end out, creating the hole for uh, the running back to run up there. Seven rushes, 11 passes. That is rare. But Hawaii's rushes have loosened up the defense, at least hopefully, for the Hawaii offense. Chang, with time, throws long for the end zone. Komine, off his fingertips, incomplete. Boy, that is really unfortunate, Jim, but I tell you, it was a nice pass by Timmy Chang. Komini made, ran a nice route. Everything worked really well there. The, the ball was maybe a little overthrown. Komini had to stretch out to catch it, but what that is showing Tulsa is they better cover deep because Hawaii is going to go there, and that's going to open up things for Hawaii's offense. 
throughout this game. Kamina now 0 for 4 in receptions. He is flanked to the right side. Third down and five and a half. The ball is at the 38-yard line of Tulsa from the shotgun. Chang looking, now throws. That is dropped. Turning around there and trying for the reception was Jason Ferguson just into the game. 5'5", 157, a freshman out of Los Angeles. He went to Fairfax High School in Los Angeles. He was the Fairfax Offensive Player of the Year in 02. Yeah, and they're really high on him. He's super quick player. He had to sit out last year, has a chance there to make his first college catch. He doesn't do it. So Tang has to leave the field to the field goal kicker, and this is a gargantuan field goal, 56-yarder. For Ayat, Ayat turns and he wants to call a timeout, and we have a penalty flag then thrown. And so there's no is... foul on the play. Hawaii title timeout. So Hawaii calls the timeout because the uh, the play clock was uh, ticking away. And you know there are there is a huge problem on the sideline if you can't get the field goal team on the field everybody should know who is the first team field goal who is second team field goal and when that situation comes up they need to run out on the field so Hawaii I mean they were lining up for a 56 yard field goal you believe that no <laughs> let's see if they try it here 56 Yours. Let's go down to Russell Yamanoha. Russ. Yeah, Jim, I checked on Wesley Lee Kipi down here on the Hawaii sideline, and he was ready to go into the ball game, so it looks like he's banged up and ready for action. Okay, thanks, Russ. That's good news for Hawaii fans. So here is Ayat. Last year, his longest was a 48 yarder. This is a 56 yarder straight on he's going to have to leg with this that's for sure waiting for the snap Milne puts it down the kick is on its way and it is it is good oh my goodness Well, that's just terrific. Oh, what an incredible kick by Ayat. I mean, that was 60-something when it landed. I mean, he just ripped it through the uprights. Just a line drive field goal. There was a follow-through on this kick. You've got to get all of it. Come on. Little body English. Come huh? on. Yes. <laughs> 56 yard field goal. So Ayat, his second field goal of the game. And in the first game of the year against um, Florida Atlantic, he had an injury, and Hawaii was really hindered in their field goal kicking. So here he comes with a 56 yarder. I mean, that, on, that ends all doubt. That ends all doubt about his kicking, his kicking prowess. <laughs> Hawaii leading six to nothing off the toe. Of Justin Ayat. He ties Jason Elam's 56 yard field goal record. He ties it. Jason Elam is now performing for the Denver Broncos in the National Football League. Yeah, I played with Jason, and I tell you, every time we got to the 35 yard line, we knew we had at least three points. Ashland Davis is deep, along with Donnie Johnson on the kickoff by Ayat. Will be short coming up to take it is Davis on the six. Davis looking for the lane, and Davis is tackled from behind. So an excellent job by the special teams that time, especially. Um, I believe it was uh, Brad, or rather uh, Brian, Manea Figo. Killian one for six. And only one yard in passing. So the Hawaii defense has really pressured him here. Four minutes, 13 seconds left to play in the uh, in the first quarter. Colton is flanked to the far side, watched by Patton. Also, two wide receivers in the slot. In motion goes Landrum. Killian the throw with time. Now throws. That is complete. Blankenship. And Blankenship trying to spin away. 
from uh, Kapa Nui. Kapa Nui finally grapples him to the turf at the 31. So a gain on the play of seven. It will be second down and six. And even though the catchers made a nice job by Tulsa getting, making the, the completion, but Kapa Nui was right there, and I like that. Hawaii has struggled covering the tight ends in the first two games. And so far in the first quarter, uh, they, they seem to be doing a good job. Now Tulsa has had chance here to really adjust on their offense Let's see whether they can put together a consistent drive here pitch with it is Parrish he's in trouble and down he goes big loss on the play Kenny Patton was the first green shirt to him and Kenny Patton does a terrific job of recognizing the run shedding the receiver that's trying to block him and coming up field and diving at the running back making him miss the reg and uh, then uh, Mel Purcell are able to come back come back into the game Mel Purcell's father by the way was standing with the 29th Brigade he's 52 years old and he's called up third down in motion again is Landrum Killian to throw steps up in the pocket throws over the middle crossing pattern that's complete to Davis on the 37 he's to the 44 and a first down Killian put that right on the money and he had time the Kaika Kernan finally was able to figure out the play 16 yard gain Davis that is his 12th catch of the year and Killian stands in the pocket there's some pressure right in his face right before he releases the ball he has just enough time Matt Funga just bulls the center back jumps in his face Killian releases the ball in the pressure and uh, just a nice play by the receiver first down for Tulsa and the ball at the 44 yard line from the shotgun they line up in tandem triple wide receiver to the right ball is given on a sweep to the near side to Parrish as he turns the corner he runs into a neighborhood full of green shirts and they're able to whack him to the field turf 218 left to play we also have a penalty flag we're in the first quarter There is no foul for a face mask. Grab the jersey, not the mask. I like that explanation, you know? Yeah. Referee and from where, Robert Cameron. It was, from where he was, behind the, the defensive lineman, it could have looked like, it looked like a face mask because of the way the, uh, the offender was pulled down. Second down and nine. The ball at the 45-yard line of Tulsa, the Golden Hurricane in possession. They send three wide receivers to the left side. Single setback Landrum comes in motion Killian again with time and he flares it out that's complete to Parrish and Parrish short of the first down gets a short gain to about the 48 Chad Kapanui there to figure things out Killian getting some time to throw the ball now and he's become more effective Killian four for nine for 27 yards his longest a 16 yard pass yeah, you're right. Earlier in the quarter, Hawaii's defense was getting more pressure on him. Uh, the last couple of plays, he just uh, he's had more time than he, he's had earlier. Again, triple wide. Excuse me. Again, triple wide receiver to the uh, left side. Five wide receivers. Empty backfield. Killian throws over the middle. That's complete. Look at his Mills to the 40, spinning to the 38, and finally is down at the 37-yard line. Lono Manners able to wrestle him. So a new look for Tulsa, something different. We talked about adjustments. That's one of them. And a nice play by the quarterback and tight end Mills because Chad Kapanui, the linebacker, came in on a blitz and they attacked the area that he vacated. And I tell you, it's all, it was only a matter of time before Killian started hooking up with Mills. Mills, the all-whack returning tight end. And there you see just a lot of open area there where Kapanui blitzed from. Brandon Diles has come into the game now for Tulsa. We're going to show you a score here between Rice and San Jose State when we can. Killian throws, sideline pattern. That's complete and big hit. That ball was complete to Landrum. And coming over to make the hit was Kenny Patton. And this is, there was no overtimes in this game. 70 to 63. No overtime. Now, sharp instruments are being withheld from the defensive coordinators of both teams. 70 to 63. What amazes me is that Rice, that eats up the clock with their running offense, could put them, that many points on the board. 
Second down, first consistent drive of the game for Tulsa. They've advanced it to the Hawaii 33-yard line. In motion is Davis. Killian back to pass. Killian is set way back at midfield. Watson. Ho'ohuli was there along with Abraham Elaminian. Elaminian coming up from the secondary. And they appeared out of nowhere. And, and a, they swallowed up Killian. A really gutsy call by Hawaii's coach. They send the linebacker and the cornerback, and it pays dividends for them with a sack. That's the end of the first quarter. Hawaii leads six to nothing on two field goals by Justin Aya. Summer Sanders. The new show that counts down anything and everything in the world of sports. The most shocking upsets, the best sports heroes, the sexiest athletes, the biggest sports scandals, and, and much, much more. more. Hosted by Summer Sanders. Every night, a new list. Every night, a new argument. The Sports List, weeknights on FSN. Southern California fans first. The SoCal Sports Report. Hello, everybody. The nightly newscast dedicated to your hometown teams, scores, interviews, and highlights. So for fans, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you, nothing gets these people down. The Southern California Sports Report, nightly at 10. Where Southern California fans come first. FSN West. Papa John's Pizza Hawaii delivers the best seats in the house and will deliver the best pizza to your house. Right now, you can get a large pizza with up to three toppings for only $15.99. Just call 979-PAPA for the best deals in the house. Special or other great pizza deals. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's Hawaii. Second quarter, about ready to commence. Hawaii leading six to nothing. And say that the big sack pushed the ball back to the 47 yard line. Tulsa 45 yards in total offense now, and Hawaii 146. Killian again back to pass. Steps up. Now he will run. He's at the 45, angling for the sidelines and out of bounds just inside the 44. They'll put it just short of the 43 yard line. That is what Killian does. Hawaii was able to really throttle him. And as they tried to turn off the faucet on him, he was able to squirt away. And smart play calling again by the defensive coaches for Hawaii. Third and long, they go with a nickel defense. Five defensive backs in there. Hollingsworth playing corner. And they, they did a good job of covering the receivers. Fourth down and 15 into Pontus Kindred. And Chad Owens is back. Owens with one very short return is last day. There's the kick. Owens going toward the sideline makes the catch at the 11 and dances out of bounds up around the 15 yard line 33 yard punt and a two yard return. So what we have seen so far tonight is an aroused defense a chance taking defense by Hawaii. We've seen blitzes. We've seen different looks and so far they have been able to hold Tulsa away. You're right Jim and it's going to help out later on because the blitzing. And the risk that they're taking now is helping their defensive linemen stay fresh. They're bringing, they're bringing in new defensive ends. They're blitzing the linebackers in the corners. Because it's hard to rush a passer 60 plays a game. And then at the end of the game, these linemen have been tired. First down for Hawaii on their own 14-yard line. Michael Brewster has gone in as the single setback. 
in motion is Chad Owens. They overload the right side from the shotgun. Ball is thrown incomplete. Oh, excellent effort that time by Clint Roundtree. He appeared in the Hawaii backfield and really put the pressure on Tim Chang. Tim Chang now, 6 4 11. A nice pressure by Roundtree coming up from a strong safety position, blitzing. Nobody picks him up. And Timmy Chang does a good job of getting rid of it, not taking the sack. Chang is now 0 for his last seven as far as passing is concerned. Second down and 10 from the 14. In motion again is Chad Owens. Chang with time. Sideline pattern that's complete to Cole Miller. Mele is out of bounds at the 25 26 yard line. That's enough for a first down. 12 yard pickup save for Mele. And you know how we talked earlier about the deep ball keeping Tulsa's defense honest. They fear the deep ball. That time, Comine ran the corner off, ran him downfield. And when Pomele cut to the sideline, there was nobody there. He was wide open to make the catch and run after the ball. Second catch of the game for Pomele. And on the season, that is his sixth. He now has 25 yards in the game. Chang with 91 yards in passing, just into the second period. Quick throw. This is complete to Rivers. And Rivers unable to run away, tried to get to the outside. He was chased on by Brandon Lord. Lord did a good job of turning, diagnosing the play, and then chasing down Jason Rivers. He's not a very big guy. He's almost a linebacker sized guy. He's playing defensive end. He's only six feet, 250 pounds. So he's able to turn around and make that move laterally and make a tackle on a wide receiver screen. In on the play of about six and a half. The ball is advanced out to the 32 yard line. It will be second down. Ian Sample has come into the game and he has flanked to the far side. Chad Owens goes in motion. They overload the right. Three wide receivers. Here comes the blitz. He's picked up. Chang in trouble. Chang in deep trouble. Eludes, throws, incomplete for Komene. Almost picked off by Bobby Blackshaw. So Komene unable to connect in this game. You can see pressure immediately by number 27, Ledette. He gets cut by the running back. But they also blitz number 35, Cody Madison, a true freshman. And Chang just does is all he can do is to avoid the rush and throw that ball. Third down for Hawaii. Sample and Owens are flanked to the far side. Paul Nelly and Kumini to the near side. And Kate Chippy is in the backfield with Chang. Chang throws, and that ball is dropped by Sample. Ball was there, that was catchable. There may have been some arm waving in front of Sample. But Hawaii comes up yeah, short. They'll have to punt it. If, if the ball hits you in the hands, you've got to come down with it. You've got to catch it. There are no excuses. You think I was making an excuse there? <laughs> God, do you? No. I could have been. I could have been. Deep for Tulsa as Milne comes in now to punt. Here's Landrum. There's the punt, just eludes a block. Landon comes up, takes it on the run, and is hit and dropped right there. Omega, right there, and getting him was Omega Hogan. And he has really just blossomed on the special teams. 36-yard punt, no return, and we may have a penalty on uh, Tulsa as the flag is down. Or maybe on Hawaii for interference. I, I have no idea. June Jones does not appear to be to be happy. There is no foul for pick catch interference. The player was blocked into the receiver. First down. Timeout. So timeout has been called. 13:35 left to play. Just into the second quarter. Hawaii leading six nothing. Coming up at the end of tonight's game, we'll be selecting a player from each team for the Bank of Hawaii Most Valuable Players. Tulsa trailing six to nothing. Tulsa has been shut out once this year, and that was against Navy. Former offensive coordinator Paul Johnson of the University of Hawaii, now the head coach 
of Navy. Navy defeated Tulsa 29 to nothing. Tulsa put together a semblance of a consistency the last time they had the ball. With it is, is a Parrish. And Parrish is thrown for a loss. Boy, the Hawaii difference really starting to dominate now. Matt Funga was the first to the ball carrier. And Matt Funga comes across the line. He beats his block immediately and uh, stops the running back, throws him back backwards. And then uh, the defender, other defenders there to make the tackle. That was Kila Kamaka Viva Ole. But terrific job of Matt Funga exploding through the line. Loss on the play of three, second down and 13. Wimberly, Landrum, and Davis are the wide receivers. And they are flanked to the left. Kindred dancing, dancing, rolling to the near side with room. Now steps up, throws long. He wants Davis, and Davis cannot hold on. And a penalty flag comes in. Covering on the play was Patton. Or did, or did Patton catch that ball? But you see the example of Matthew Killian. Fitch of 24 green. White. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. That's an automatic first down. Well, we, in our meeting earlier this year with the referees, they told us that what they look for when they're calling pass interference, the first thing they look for is if the defender is beat. If he's beat, more likely or not, he'll cheat. I think that influenced the, the referee's call because that looked like a good play by Patton, but he certainly was beat early on. But that, I don't think, was pass interference. I don't no. think that any semblance of pass no, interference. No, because he, he got there and he turned around and made a play on the That's ball. That's right. And he's got every right to make a play on the ball. That's just a terrible call. Just a terrible call. Ball out short of the 45-yard line. Boy, June Jones still upset, still pacing the sidelines on the far side of the field. Landrum goes in motion, first down, the ball at the 45. Killian steps up again, throws. That is, let's see, that is complete to Mills. Mills was in a real mix master in there, and he was able to make the catch. Excellent catch by Mills. That advances the ball after that 18-yard reception inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. Uh, Hawaii chooses to rush four guys, a lot of time for Keelan. He makes a nice throw to his tight end, and if they give him time, he is going to find one of his tight ends or Colton, the wide receiver. So the ball is advanced now to the 37-yard line of Hawaii. Here comes Tulsa. Colton has flanked to the near side. In motion again is Landrum. Single setback is Parrish. Killian looking, chased out of the pocket. Killian directing traffic. Now throws up the sideline, and that is, let's see what the call is. That should be out of bounds, or they, are they going to call it a catch? No, that's incomplete. There's a flag down there. So we'll see. I didn't see anybody get hit out of bounds. He may have gone out and then came back in. The illegal touching by the offense. The player went out of bounds, was the first to touch the pass. All right. At the loss of down at the previous spot. Well, nice call, Jim. So Landrum went out and then came back in, and you cannot do that. That's illegal touching once you come back in. Yeah, once so, you go out of bounds, you become an ineligible receiver. So Steve Craig Thorpe, not exactly a happy man at the moment. Second down and 10, the ball at the 37-yard line of Hawaii. Mills starting to trot out. He'll come into the game for Landrum. 12.07 left to play in the first half. Hawaii holding on to a 6 to nothing lead. Two field goals by Dustin Ayat, one of them a 56-yarder. Killian looking throws that is juggled and then held on by Mills as he is able to advance just short of the 30 yard line that is short of the first down. Tulsa has to go to about the 27 Watson Ho'ohuli there to make the tackle for Hawaii. Watson number 55. And Watson nice to see him back he tore his ACL last year. 
I believe it was in the first game, and he had to have surgery on it, so he's worked hard, and now he's back on the playing field. It's nice to see. Donnie Johnson has come into the game. He's flanked to the far side, double tight end. Mills in motion. Option play. With it is Killian. Killian trying for the first down, and he is very close. So another variation on the theme by Tulsa. Tamabasa Moore at 5'11", 210, the junior there to make the tackle for Hawaii. And Akbon is on the end, end of the line of scrimmage there, and he has an opportunity to come upfield and contain. He doesn't get that done, but he gets back and gets involved in the tackle. They are going to but measure. A gutsy job by Killing. He just kept running until he had the first down, what he thought it was the first down. Killing in high school played eight man football. And that's a that's a very quick, exciting game. Right. I remember here at Pearl Harbor 50 years ago when I was a mere lad just developing <laughs> a, a memory. They used to play six man football among six the military, the military uh, bases, six man football. And that is just wild. Hey, we used to play six man football on Hawaii Street in Haula too. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably well, was it 50 years ago. Though? It was probably just as good. Yeah. <laughs> Six man was it three against three though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No line. Everybody's a receiver. But eight man football is for schools that are very small in student population and they can still enjoy the sport. First down because of measurement. The ball is advanced to the 27 yard line. Pulso getting into very tough yardage here. Killian throws that is off of Davis's hands and over to give him a nudge was Leonard Peters. That'll bring up second down and 10 for Tulsa. I tell you, the safeties for Hawaii has got quite a job cut out for him this week, covering those two tight ends, and then when they realize the tight ends aren't aren't uh, in their area they've got to go out in the flats and make a tackle like a Leonard Peters just did. Killian eight for 15 71 yards now. Double wide receiver to the far side. Dials and Parrish back. Ball is given to Parrish. Parrish to the 20. Parrish to the 10. And Parrish is finally twisted to the turf by Lono Manners. 20 yard gain. And when Parrish appeared into the secondary, when he had that probe stepped into the secondary, he was running alone. And nice play calling by Tulsa. Hawaii goes max pass defense. Tulsa runs a draw play. Akbon almost has it, misses the tackle. And just a really nice run by Parrish. Really good call by uh, Tulsa. Now it's first down and goal to go. Colton is flanked to the far side along with Davis. Brandon Dials is the single setback behind Killian. In motion is Davis. Killian looking into the end zone. Checks off Davis. Now rolling to the far side. Looking into the end zone again. Throws it up and out. Excellent pressure by Hawaii. And you have to give credit to the secondary. They blotted every possibility. Absolutely, because uh, David uh, Killian had time. Good job by Mel Purcell of pursuing the quarterback and then the quarterback because he's outside of the tackle box can throw the ball away and not be penalized for it. So heads up play by Killian. Second down the ball is at the seven. Take another look at Killian's ability to roll. And they see Mel Purcell I tell you this kid from Samoa this young man is an excellent player he never stops he's got the size. He's a real, real good player for Hawaii. Triple wide receiver now to the left. Killian looking quickly into the end zone, and he throws it down. That may be intentional grounding, and here comes the flag. Oh, go. Hawaii showed up in a hurry. It became a hotel lobby of green shirts. Yeah, and just instinctively, he just looks like he just threw the ball to get rid of it because Kernan was right in his face. There was no way he was going to avoid that sack. Intentional grounding, number 15 offense. Lost it down at the spot of the foul. Third down. Kernan's going to come in on a blitz right away. Be right in his face. Nobody touches him. 
The running back tries to cut him. He jumps over the running back. Good athletic play by Kernan. So that's ball. a really bad penalty for Tulsa. Down, down in the red zone to take an intentional grounding call. So Tulsa uses a timeout here with 10-19 left to play in the first half. Hawaii trying to hold them off. The Warriors leading six to nothing. Your one-stop shop for anything related to UH Athletics is HawaiiAthletics.com. Visit the Hawaii website for information about UH teams and fan activities, as well as to purchase tickets and merchandise. That's HawaiiAthletics.com. Third down and goal to go. And the ball is at the 16-yard line. Away with five defensive backs. They show a four-man front from the shotgun. Killian, five receivers. Killian throws over the middle for the end zone. Incomplete. There was a collision. And they say it is not interference. That ball was thrown wide. Let's take a look at this. Killian releases the ball. It, it might be an uncatchable ball. Or just incidental contact. Well, it's intended anyway. for, it was intended on a crossing pattern for Wimberley. So in is Brad De DeVault. One for one in field goals. He is 17 for 29 in his career. He kicks it and it is good. That ball twisting through the uprights and that cuts the Hawaii lead in half. It is six to three. So these two teams that are very offensive minded have managed only three field goals with 10 minutes and 10 seconds left to play and I tell in you, the first half. Just watching Tulsa so far, you can see how they've struggled offensively. They get down the field and then they've got penalties. Uh, they just not doing the job. And the coaches must be really frustrated because they've got a lot of talent. They've got their tight end tandem of Mills and Blankenship led the nation last year in receptions. So they've got the talent. They're just not putting it together. Steve Craig Thorpe, before he took over at Tulsa and became their 26th head coach in the history of the university, he was uh, the quarterback coach at uh, Buffalo in the National Football League. And he follows very similar tracks to the college ranks as June Jones, who was the head coach when he accepted the job at Hawaii. He was the head coach of the San Diego Chargers. Ross Dickerson is deep. Gerard Tracy will kick for Tulsa. Hawaii leading six to three. We are in the second period. Waiting for it is Dickerson takes it at the eight. Zigzags up to the 20 and then falls forward to the 21. Donnie Johnson on the special teams number 89 made the tackle for Tulsa. So Hawaii will put the ball in play at the 20 yard line. When you look at um, Tim Chen in passing, he is six for 18 for 97 yards. So let's see if Hawaii can put together a consistent drive here. Michael Brewster comes in to the backfield. He is the single running back for Hawaii. Pomelli Owens and Rivers are flanked to the left. Komine to the right. Ball is given to Brewster, trying to get outside. Crosses the 20, and then he is spun to the turf as he gets to the 25-yard line. Randy Duncan flying up from the secondary. Number 6, 6'2", 173-pound. True freshman out of Mesquite, Texas, made the stop. He was rated as the 71st best player coming out of high school in the state of Texas by the Dallas Morning News. That's not bad. Yeah, and, and a true freshman. They've got seven true freshmen on defense that rotating in play, so a lot of inexperience out there for Tulsa. Gain on the play of five, second down and five for Hawaii. Tulsa showing blitz. They do. Jang throws, throws it low. That ball is picked just off the ground by Owens. 40, Owens at the 50. He may score. 20, 10. Touchdown, 75 yards. What a catch by Owens. And then the rest was magic. 
You know, it was an incredibly hard catch. He goes down and catches it at his toenails, brings it up and runs it all the way down the field. A perfect play call by Hawaii. So Tulsa comes on a, on a blitz, a blitz, two safeties. He catches it. The ball may have touched the ground and the ref not see it. But Owens makes a really nice grab there. Goes down to the, like I said, to his toenails to pick that one up and runs it all the way in. Ayat out of the hold of Milne. Boy, they'll be discussing that catch for a while. But what a run afterwards. Ball is kicked up by Ayat, and it is good. Now, Steve Craigthorpe may be going out to talk to the official. We'll see, or just to his team. What a run. Experience the future of sports. Phenom Factory has the original hit-proof compression suit. One piece, one pound, one place to get it. Visit us online or call Phenom Factory. The future of sports equipment is here. Standing by. At Lexus, we're obsessed with making cars that handle and perform like no others. In this pursuit of perfection, we've also developed a camera which aids in negotiating the occasional obstacle to the rear. See your Southern California liquor. for 189 for the best deals on vegas rooms from 29 to 299 book your trip with the vegas experts at vegas.com now vegas.com it's who you know if your car is sluggish or you sometimes use a lower quality gasoline pour a bottle of tecron concentrate fuel system cleaner in your tank then fill it with gas get the performance you paid for with tecron concentrate You're watching FSN West 2. Central Pacific Bank sponsors the Loyalty Award by donating $100 toward the Central Pacific Bank Endowed Scholarship Fund for every touchdown. Hawaii scores Central Pacific Bank fiercely loyal banking. So the scoring drive, two plays, 80 yards, 75 yard catch and run by Chad Owens. Ashland Davis deep in the end zone. He will not return it on the kickoff. So it is now 13 to three. We'll take we'll we'll take another look at that. And of particular interest is Chang before the throw. Looking then all of a sudden he turns, and you cannot see that because um, he was blocked there by Brewster. But when he starts going, he's uncatchable. Yeah, but when he caught the ball, it looked like the ball may have touched the ground. And if we were in the Big Ten this year, they are doing reviews. They're doing a play review. They're testing it out for the NCAA, and that would have definitely been a reviewable play. You know something? It's a touchdown. Killian backs up, chased out of the pocket by Kernan. Now starts running back and throws it up and incomplete through it to an empty part. Of the field turf. Boy, Hawaii is impressed tonight with the pressure they've been able to put on Killian. But First one to him was Kernan. The second was Illumimian. Illumimian has been ubiquitous in this game. Yeah, and I tell you, Kernan is going to think about that one for a long time because he came in untouched and the quarterback juked him. Sometimes you come in and you want to make a big hit on the quarterback, and really you need to break down, especially with, with somebody like Killian who can run, break down and make sure you got the tackle. Here comes Tulsa, Colton to the far side, and they overload again on the right with three wide receivers. Under center, Killian, short drop, throws incomplete. That was intended for Davis. And that will bring up third down and 10 from just over the 20 yard line. In fact, it is the 20 yard line. The yardstick is about a half yard off. But that happens. It's due to interpretation. Now they even it up. 
Third and ten. Four wide receivers. Killing. Oh, hit as he throws. That is complete. That ball was just drilled in there. And the receiver was Montice Colton. That is his 13th reception of the season, and that's a first down on third and long yardage for Tulsa, 12-yard game. Cameron Collingsworth into the game now in the secondary, and Elamimian double-teamed him. And the Lono Manners come in, comes in from his safety spot, untouched, untouched on a blitz, and just lays a hit on Killian right as he released the ball. Nice call by, by UH for, to get pressure, but Killian just released the ball a microsecond before the defender got there. Clock ticking. About eight minutes, 30 seconds left in the second period. Killian again to throw. Lays it off, and with it is Parrish. And Parrish flirts with the yardstick and the green shirts. And he gains only about a yard on the play. Leonard Peters coming up from the secondary. Peters from Laia, and he went also to Kahuku High School. He's a Red Raider. Red Raider for life, and he did a terrific job there breaking down, just like what I talked about. He came up, the running back caught the ball. When he turned around, he, he started juking. Peters broke down so that he would not get juked and made a tackle, a sure tackle. So here comes Tulsa again, second down, long yardage. Killian throws, crossing pattern. That's complete to Blankenship with running room. Blankenship at the 40 to the 33-yard line. Huge play. That time for Tulsa. And Killian waited and waited for the pattern to ripen, and it ended up being a 34-yard game. Well, the blitz got picked up. Right there, the corner blitz. Elamimian gets picked up. And then the tight end runs to the open area. Blankenship oh, runs to the open area. And right down here on the end there, I'll tell you, Patton was getting held the whole way in pursuit. The, the ref just not able to see it. But a nice play by Tulsa nonetheless. Blankenship's second reception. He now has 39 yards in the game. And Killian has 117 yards in passing. First down from the 34-yard line of Hawaii. 13-3, Hawaii leads. Ball is given to Parrish. Squeezes into the secondary, and not much after that. They converge on him, making uh, the tackle for Hawaii. Yeah, and like we were talking earlier, Jim, I'm impressed with Hawaii's front. They've done a good job against the run. They've put pressure on the quarterback. It's got to keep it up. This is a four-quarter game. This is only the second quarter. I hope that we can continue to play like this, or Hawaii can continue to play like this the length of the game. Funga, they're making the tackle for Hawaii. Second down and eight. Brandon Diles is now the single setback. In motion is Landrum. Killian again with time. Now chased out of the pocket by Ho'ohuli. And he will run. 30. Angles out of bounds for the first down. Inside the 25 to the 24. And a penalty flag comes up. Somebody made contact with him. Yeah, that could be a personal foul, and that is huge. And I think it's going to be on Tanubasamoy. After the play was over, personal foul. Yeah, it's 15 yard penalty, half the distance. That's an automatic first down. Well, Killian avoids the blitz by Watson Hohuli, number 55, who continues to pursue Moy. And at the end, see him push while the guy was out of bounds and then the guy runs into the advertisement over there it looked really bad and Moy rightly got penalized half the distance to the goal puts it on the hawaii 12 yard line 13-3 hawaii leading 706 left the play in the first half the real parish now has come back in and he is back there along with dials Double wide receiver to the left. Killian hands the ball on a delay to Parrish. Parrish all the way inside the five to the four yard line. So on the ground, Tulsa really threatening now, and they are very close to a first down. And Jones not too happy with TJ Moy after that penalty, pulls him out, and Paul Lutu Carroll is now in at linebacker.
Oh, by the way, that tackle was made by Kaika Alamo Francis, uh, you know, coming back from back surgery and in the game. Ex basketball player lines up at defensive end. Ball is given again, and with it is Parrish very close to the goal line, and he's hurled back. Should be enough for a first down for Tulsa. So credit the Golden Hurricane. They they come right back after being scored upon a 75 yard touchdown run. They put the ball in play at their own 20 yard line and they now have first and goal to go. The ball just outside the Warrior one yard line. 607 left. Oh, he's trying to hold on to this lead. First goal to go. Parrish. The single setback. Killian to the end zone. Touchdown. Killian able to just roll a little bit and then go off tackle into the end zone. So Killian able to get his first touchdown of the season. Well, see, Killian, they pass in this offense. They pass, they run the double tight, they run the running back, and then they also run the option with Killian. And on this time, Killian running the option, keeps the ball, and just goes up into the end zone for a touchdown. So DeVault is in to try the extra point. Kick is up, and it is good. So it is now 13 to 10. And Hawaii back holding on to that scant three point lead with 552 left to play in the first half. Go. Thanks. Design 2005 Mercedes Benz C230 Sport Sedan. Around here, you have to love what you drive. Once and for all, the greatest is about to leave his mark. It's the Poker Superstars Invitational. For the first time in history, the eight greatest players gather to finally answer the question. Who is the world's best poker player? No amateurs, no jokers, no mercy. Learn from the masters. The Poker Superstars Invitational, tomorrow, only on FSN. Tracy will kick off for Tulsa. And deep for Hawaii is Ross Dickerson. 13 for Hawaii, 10 for the Golden Hurricane. Kick is short, coming up to take it on the six yard line is Dickerson with a wall in front of him. Dickerson gets to the 24 and over now the 25 and we'll give him forward progress to about that point Chris Chamberlain true freshman now some pushing and shoving going on a little bravado breaking out on the part of both teams away will have it first and 10 from their 25 Wes Kipi has come back into the game as the running back for Hawaii Chang is seven for 19 for 172 yards. And one touchdown. He has six touchdowns now on the season and no interceptions. Triple wide receiver to the left. Tulsa showing a three man front. O'Malley in motion. Lee Keepy. Lee Keepy into the secondary and he gets short yardage. From the 25 to the 28, Bobby Klink there to make the stop. He's out of Jenks, Oklahoma. 
and he is a transfer from the University of Oklahoma, number 26, and he became eligible this week following transferring from Oklahoma, and he makes his first tackle for Tulsa. His second tackle for Tulsa, I should say. Second down and seven. Again from the shotgun. And away. False start. Rivers may have moved along with the Chad Owens. Before the ball can be snapped, ball start, number 84, offense, five yard penalty, still second down. There you see Rivers, five yard penalty. Moves the ball back to the 20, uh, let's see, they'll put it on the 23 yard line. Clock ticking under five minutes now in the first half. Rivers is flanked to the far side. Again, showing blitz. They do not. Chang with time. Steps up. Throws for Owens. And Owens cannot get to it at midfield. And Tulsa came with a three-man rush. Timmy Chang had all day. Owens ran. Just the ball was a little thrown a little too far in front of him. Clink in nice coverage. Let's go down to Russ Yamanoha. Russell. Down here on the Tulsa sideline, the Golden Hurricane have a kind of cool invention, a blue mat with numbers on it, and it's taped to the field right in front of the Tulsa bench. It's used for the special teams unit on third down, like a situation like this. The punt return unit gets on the mat. Everybody has a number assigned to them, 1 through 11, and that's how Tulsa tries to keep itself from picking up substitution penalties. So far, they haven't. Third down and 11. Chang throws and throws it into the bench almost picked off by one of the Tulsa coaches so that will bring up fourth down and Hawaii will have to punt it well I'll tell you change just having trouble getting anybody to hold on to his balls tonight his passes there you see the coach dropping a pass Jermaine Landrum deep for Tulsa Milne is in to punt. Ten men on the line of scrimmage for Tulsa. Here they come. Ball is kicked spiral. Landrum at the 35. And Landrum is rolled over at the 34. Another great job by Omega Hogan. But oh, the, that hit and the one before that are got to be up there. The nicest hits I've seen on special teams in a long time, both by the same guy. Omega Hogan fighting off the block. As soon as the guy catches the ball, he dives forward and makes the guy go down to avoid him. Hogan out of Houston, Texas, the junior, came into this game on the special teams. And he has played very well. Here comes Tulsa. Now, Tulsa trailed in this game 6 to nothing. They also trailed 13 to 3. But they are in a position now with 4 minutes and 29 seconds left in the first half to capture the lead if they can put together a consistent drive. Five receivers, no avail, as Killian is sacked. Tanovasa Moy was there. And Matt Fonga, too. Matt Fonga having a nice get game, coming for the pressure, and Moy blitzing untouched. I tell you, uh, if they got five receivers, they don't have too many blockers. And Hawaii sends a linebacker on a blitz there, taking a chance, and it turns out good for him. So Hawaii able to gamble again on the blitz, and it works. Big loss on the play. The line of scrimmage being the 34-yard line, it is now the 24. So a loss of 10. That'll bring up second down and 20. Double wide receivers. Motion again is Landrum. Parrish back there with Killian. Killian throws it incomplete. It was intended. It was intended for Parrish. Tulsa wanted interference. And there you see the experience of Louis Funga, the old man on the defensive line there. He reads the, that it's a screen, and he practically tackles the running back. Here you can see Louis Funga. When the running back comes through, Louis Funga, see that? He grabs onto him and pulls him down. Killian palms upwards looking toward the bench. He wants uh, some information on the next play. And the ball 
keeps trying to go somewhere else. So the officials place it down at the 24. Third down and 20. Crowd senses this is a big play for Tulsa. Killian drops straight back. Five-man pattern. Throws over the middle. That is complete. And with it is Landrum. Breaks a tackle. Gets away from Peters. Breaks another tackle. All the way over midfield to the 45-yard line of Hawaii. That's a first down. And that is another big play for Tulsa. 31 yards. Terrific play by Tulsa. Hawaii decided to rush four guys. They didn't put a lot of pressure on Keelan. He makes a nice throw. And then, geez, just a nice catch and run by Landrum. And Hawaii missed several tackles that time. We talked earlier about how they've got to be a better tackling team on defense if they hope to win. 318 left. Killian hands the ball off to Parrish. And Parrish goes from the Hawaii 46 to the Hawaii 43 yard line. Abraham Illumimian coming up from the secondary for Hawaii. Gain on the play of three, second down and seven. Landon Keppel has come in at wide receiver and he is flanked to the far side. Keppel so far this year has no reception. Number 21. Motion again is Landrum. Killian looking. Chased out of the pocket again. Throws. That is complete to Parrish. And Parrish gets back to the line of scrimmage. That's all. Patton able to put him down. Excellent pressure again from Abraham Illumimian. Yeah, he comes in on the blitz from his corner position untouched. And he actually breaks down a little. Killian trying to avoid him. Illumimian able to keep with him, keep pursuit. And Killian just making a terrific play to get ready to, to make that connection with his receiver. Killian is that kind of quarterback. 13 of 25, 149 yards. He has struggled, but he is tough to bring down. Just when you think you have him, you don't. Third down and six in motion is Keppel. Killian drops back, but we have a penalty floor. 152 left to play in the first half. Before the ball can be snapped, 56 offense, false start, five yard penalty, still third down. Dan an hour, the offensive tackle. He's out of Bennettville, Arkansas. There you see him. 152 left in half number one. Away holding on to a three point lead. Third down, it is third down and 11. But Tulsa has been able to come up with the big play. See if they can do it here. Killian looking right. Throwing. That is incomplete. Is it interference? Yes. Right before the ball got to Colton. Hollingsworth made contact. And another penalty. Remember the last time they came down. The personal foul penalty out of bounds. This is another big penalty. Pass interference. Number 28 defense. First down at the spot of the foul. Yeah, Colton. I mean, uh, Hollings were just recently promoted to the second team. Finds himself in there on nickel defense. He makes a good play, a good break on the ball. He just gets there a little too early. A fraction of a second early. Hits. They see he, he runs into the back of the receiver before the ball gets there. And that is a penalty. And that is what they will call. First down and 10. New life for Tulsa. 124 left to play in the first half. The ball on the Warrior. 35 yard long. Killian again to throw. With time. Throws long. It is intercepted by Patton. Kenny Patton, his first interception of the year. It is the sixth interception thrown by Killian. And Hawaii snuffs out the rally. And a terrific grab by Patton. He's all the way down in the end zone. He turns around in the air to make the grab. Bad decision by Killian to throw in the coverage. There are three Warriors in that area. 
And he put uh, way too much air under it. Gave Patton the opportunity to run down there, turn around, and make the catch. Now Hawaii with an opportunity. One minute and 17 seconds left to play in the first half. They lead 13 to 10. Timmy Chang, lead keepy back there with him. In motion is Poe Miller. Chang, rolling. Still rolling, turns the corner and runs out of bounds, loses yardage, and we have a penalty flag. And there's going to be a flag thrown on Tala Acera here, and it might be a personal foul. Either personal foul or holding, and we'll see. Boy, Hawaii just has been snake bitten tonight by penalties at the most inopportune time. Holding. Number 70 on the offense. The penalties decline. Second down. So the line of scrimmage, still the 20 yard line. Second down and 10 for Hawaii. Hawaii came out very productive in moving the ball early in the game, but now through the adjustments, Tulsa has tightened down the defense. Given to Kili Kipi, leaps over a man at the line of scrimmage and gets out to the 22. Michael Ledette, who came into this game with 35 tackles, leading the team in that department, makes, makes the stop. And I tell you who's impressive to me on that defense, right now number 18, Clint Roundtree. He keeps coming up on blitzes and he gets in the way of the running plays. He's just all over the place. Man-to-man -man coverage, Chang. Looking left, steps up, now throws. That is knocked away, and the crowd wants interference there. That was close. Oliver Fletcher. Thirty-seven seconds left. Third down goes awry. It is fourth down. Well, they're not going to get the interference call. Uh, I was looking over the rules that the referees gave us in our meeting, and it has to be obvious. It has to be an obvious foul, or they're not going to call it. So Mill is in. And Landrum, Jermaine Landrum, is back, standing on his own 40 yard line. Mill will let it go. High snap. Kicks it. Here's Landrum. Landrum to midfield. And he slips and falls, and more laundry. More flags. Flag on the near sideline. So the officials talking it over. After the play, personal foul, number 28 of Hawaii. That's Hollingsworth. With a 15 yard penalty. It'll be first down. So Hollingsworth called earlier for interference now gets called for a personal foul. And the 5'11", 167 pound junior out of Leavenworth, Washington. Two big penalties called against him. 27 seconds left to play in the first half. So here comes Tulsa with another opportunity. They have the ball inside the Hawaii 35 yard line to the 34. Hawaii now has been penalized eight times for 84 yards in this first half. Killian with it. Killian, triple wide receiver to the left. He's at the 35. Killian angling for the sidelines and out of bounds he goes. Chased out over there by Hollingsworth. Yeah, and uh, with 20 seconds left on the clock and two timeouts, they still got time here to take two or three shots into the end zone. But again, they probably need to save one of those timeouts for a field goal. And that would tie the game. Hawaii holding on here. They lead it 13 to 10. If you go back to last year and you use the Tulsa game as a precedent, Hawaii was leading 16 to 3. And they lost that game. Tulsa just kept coming at them. Quick pass. And tripped up. Hollingworth coming up from the corner. Blankenship will be credited with the reception. 
short of the first down. The ball is at the 27 yard line, 15 seconds left. Killian has been intercepted once. He has thrown for 153 yards here in this first half. Blankenship to the far side, Mills to the near side. Double wide receiver. Killian, another sideline pattern that's complete to Blankenship. He dives out of bounds, stops the clock with 10 seconds left. And that's very close to the first down. He had the first down when he caught the ball. When he dove out of bounds, he dove backwards and might have uh, taken himself out of the first down range. So it will be now fourth down. You're absolutely right. He dove out of bounds at an angle that did not give him the first down. So Brad DeVault comes in. He's a hometown boy out of Tulsa. Hometown product from Holland Hall High School. Timeout, Tulsa. At their second charge, timeout. So Tulsa calls the timeout. Boy, he's got to uh, really be concerned with the way the penalties have hurt them. Penalties that should not have happened, especially when they are of the personal foul variety. And that has given Tulsa really extra momentum. And they've been able to get their first touchdown, and they trail by only three. And the vault will try to tie the game at the end of this uh, first half. Yeah, you're right, Jim. They're, let's call them what they were. They're dumb penalties on, by Hawaii. But Tulsa has kind of balanced the scale like that play right there. They've got the first down, and they dive out of bounds behind the first down marker, making it fourth down. Now they've got to kick a field goal. Stuff like that's kind of balancing this game out. Yeah, not that's not exactly the front of the class stuff either. So DeVault, who already has one field goal, And to try this one. And this one is, uh, of, of, it, it is substantial. This is a 42 yarder. Angle from the right to tie the game. That kick is up. That looks good. That kick is good. He drilled that one. And we are tied at 13 with six seconds left to play in the first half. So Tulsa has come back from a 13 to 3 deficit and they have tied it now at 13. And we will have a kickoff and a return to for all intents and purposes to end uh, the first half. It has been a long first half. And I noticed Hawaii special teams on the field goals because the Tulsa kicker doesn't get it up high. He kicks a pretty low ball and they've been trying to bulldoze the middle push the center back or the guards back and get a get a blocker up there up the middle like Akbon or something like that it just hasn't happened. Six seconds remaining here in the first half. Ross Dickerson is back again to return for Hawaii and Tulsa kicking it off is Gerard Tracy freshman. Tracy squibs it and it is picked up by one of the up men and he swarmed under as he goes out of bounds. With it is Chris Cole and that will be the end of the first half. 13 13 tie Tulsa has been able to take what Hawaii has given them and they have been able to use it to their advantage and they've come back from a 10 point deficit and they have tied it at 13. Let's get on to Russell Yamanoha. 
coach, everybody knows Hawaii wants to turn the game into a sure. track meet, but you guys have done a good job of kind of keeping the tempo down. Well, we've done a good job. They've dropped some footballs, you know, on third down situations, but our guys are playing hard. Both teams are playing hard. you got two well-coached teams. It's going to be a heck of a second half. you got like your chances tied at halftime. Well, you know, we're, we're where we want to be. It's 0-0, zero, zero, you know, 13-13, zero, zero for both of us, so we are just got to go out and, and, uh, and play hard in the second half. All right, Coach, thanks Thank a lot for stopping by. So that'll do it. We'll take this break and be back at Aloha Stadium. We're tied at 13. Shocking upsets, the best sports heroes, the sexiest athletes, the biggest sports scandals, and, and much, much more. more. Hosted by Summer Sanders. Every night, a new list. Every night, a new argument. The Sports List, weeknights on FSN. Southern California fans first. The SoCal Sports Report. Hello, everybody. The nightly newscast dedicated to your hometown teams, scores, interviews, and highlights. So for fans, yeah. I'll tell you, nothing gets these people down. The Southern California Sports Report, nightly at 10. Where Southern California fans come first. FSN West. Halftime, 13-13 tie. Hawaii led it 13 to 3 and it looked like Hawaii was finally going to start to have that offensive pace and run away from Tulsa that just did not happen there was the big play in the first half for Hawaii Dougie and that was the catch by Owens and we're going to show you that catch and then he lumbered for a 75 yard touchdown his third touchdown of the season and of course that was the longest completion of the season but did he catch it? I mean, when we looked at it and looked at it again, you seem to think that no, he did not. But the officials were not in a position to call it. So we'll take a look here at that uh, catch. We'll take a look at the whole play with um, Owens, Chad Owens, and the pass from Timmy Chang. Timmy Chang takes the snap, and then all of a sudden he feels pressure. So he throws it, but he throws the ball low, and that leads to all kinds of complications. It's a great catch by Owens, but is it a catch? It is a catch. I think it is a catch. He caught the ball, but then it, it looks like it touched the ground before he picked it up. He caught it right at his toes, and then he picked it up, but it looks like it touched the ball before he picked it up and ran with it. Of course, the videotape will show that, and we're waiting for that. But uh, uh, when you look at it and, and you see it, you still think it's a catch. It's a catch, but then it was down right where he caught it. Okay. So that set up Hawaii, and they were able to uh, go away and have what was turning into a very comfortable lead, only to have penalties, as you say, dumb penalties, and I agree with you. Keep Tulsa alive on their drives. They were able to use uh, their field goal, the kick kicker, and, and also Killian scoring his first rushing touchdown uh, of the season. There is a record tying effort uh, by uh, Justin Ayat, 56 yard field goal, and he just he just drilled that. He just drilled it. I mean, there was no doubt at all. And remember, before he kicked it, I said to you, hey, do you think it's going to really be a field goal or is it going to be a fake? 
and that would enter into discussion, but no. He, I didn't think he, they were going to kick it because he hadn't tried one that long in, in, in la either last year or this year. And it, it ties a field goal, and I was there when Jason, Jason Elam made that field goal. It's a terrific kick by uh, Ayat. Hawaii well, came out and really played very up-tempo defense and really had Killian off balance. But as that first half has gone along, Tulsa, as they did last year, able to steal a little of the momentum away, a little of the energy away, and we are tied at 13 at halftime. Stay with us, everybody. We will continue. Hi, I'm Eric Estrada, and this is amazing. It's truly amazing. Beautiful beaches, gorgeous sunsets, crisp, clean air, and explosive growth. I love it. Now listen carefully because you could be here too, right here on the beach located in Ocean Shores, Washington. Now when I say here, I don't mean as a visitor or a tourist. I mean as an owner, a property owner. So many things to do, bike rides. Driving on the beach and playing in the sand. Very nice to take a horse ride. The restaurants are really good, the seafood's great. I think it's as good as you can get. Beats California beaches any day. We found the property here to be very inexpensive and that's why we bought here and we really enjoy coming here. Ocean Shores is definitely a growing city. I love Ocean Shores. You can go from sunrise to sunset. You're gonna love it. Washington is one of the fastest growing states in the country. The U.S. Census Bureau projects Washington to have a 41% population increase by the year 2010. Property in an ocean community is nearly impossible to find. And Ocean Shores is one of the last developments that gives you the opportunity to buy a piece of paradise before it's all gone. The good people at National Recreational Properties are so confident that you will fall in love with Ocean Shores that they are willing to fly you and a guest to see all the magnificent qualities you just witnessed on your TV firsthand. We call it our Flying Weekend. It's really a pleasant experience. You'll get round trip airfare on a commercial airline for two, ground transportation, beautiful hotel accommodations, and of course, your personal tour of the beautiful home sites you just saw at Ocean Shores. Take advantage of this offer. Write this number down, then give us a call. Come visit this incredible ocean community for free. Start planning your future by owning Washington real estate. We're back at Aloha Stadium, Hawaii, and Tulsa in a Western Athletic Conference game tied at 13. Let's send it down to the field to enjoy the sights and sounds of the Hawaii marching band. here on the sideline with Hawaii Director of Athletics Herman Fraser and Mr. Fraser we're seeing these uh, yellow decals on the helmets of the Hawaii players tonight has a special significance especially for tonight's game. Well no question I mean I'm sure that we all know that uh, one of the bases here will deploy their uh, military over to Iraq and we were just happy to be a part of today's festivities and have so many people here in Honolulu and the state of Hawaii come and uh, be a part of this. And of course, the uh, decals honor the 29th Infantry, and we had a, a ceremony pregame to honor that, that unit that's going off to Iraq. That's exactly right, and our staff's been working with them, and as you know, uh, the state was involved, and, and the governor was here, and a few other people were here, so it's, it's just a wonderful thing to do. Okay. Now, speaking about the Warrior football team, now the, the status of Warrior football from a behind-the-scenes standpoint, uh, how is the health of this program from, from where you're standing in that office? Well, I'm sure that we all know that uh, 
what we need to do is just get a nice little win in this game. Obviously, it's tied right now and at halftime, and uh, you know we've seen some pretty good ball on both sides. I think Tulsa probably surprised us in, in a couple of instances, but uh, for the, the fact of the matter is, I know June's in there now with our student athletes getting prepared, and we'll see a pretty exciting second half. You probably can't talk about all of it, but what are some of the some of the things on the horizon? Some of the big projects that the the uh, Hawaii Athletic Department is working on, as an overall standpoint. Well, one of the things is we're we're doing. We're working in conjunction with the University Foundation, and we're working on a new master plan. And with that master plan, and you and I were talking earlier about an on-campus stadium. I don't think that'll happen for us. But I think there's some other things that we can do for our facilities and spruce them up uh, for our coaches and for our athletes, and also uh, for all our fans who come out and watch all of our wonderful teams. Some exciting times up there in Manoa. Well, we think so. I mean, we've been having some fun with it, and uh, we just need to keep winning with all of our teams. And we've been happy with the academic process and all the things that's going on in the classroom as well. Okay, so we want to switch gears a little bit. Well, for the people at home who don't know, you are the chef de mission, is that right? At, for the U.S. Olympic team, am I saying it right? That is correct. I was the chef de mission for the U.S. delegation uh, that was in Athens, and we actually spent 31 days in Athens, and it was, it was a wonderful experience for us. We had a good time. And then we also boldly predicted that we would uh, come out with 100 medals, and we actually won 103, so sometimes you get lucky. Now, how long did it take you to get acclimated to the Hawaii time zone again? I'm not yet. <laughs> I'm not yet. I mean, I went to work the first day at 3.30 in the morning, and even now, and, uh, I'm still not acclimated. All right, thanks a lot, Dr. Herman Fraser down here on the sideline. Having fun at Tulsa and Hawaii, 9 to 13. At halftime, we'll be back with more right after this. Design 2005 Mercedes-Benz C230 Sport Sedan. Around here, you have to love what you drive. A special announcement from the Bargain Network. You can buy cars for as low as $500. Choose from thousands of cars repossessed and seized by the U.S. Customs, IRS, FBI, and private organizations. Call 800-831-6931. Foreclosed homes and distressed properties are selling for as low as $199 a month. HUDs, VAs, and FHAs, repos, and more. Through the Bargain Network, I got my dream car, and I saved a lot of money. New cars and homes are being added every day. For listings in your area, call now. 800-831-6931. Call now. was baseball's version of David versus Goliath. I don't think anybody in baseball thought the A's were not going to beat the Dodgers. Until a wounded warrior stared down the game's best pitcher. Words can't describe what I was feeling right there. And with one swing, turned the baseball world upside down. It was awesome, I'm telling you. Still get chills when I think about that. The 1988 World Series, Game 1. Beyond the Glory, Sunday on FSN. FSN West 2. Home of the high school football game of the week since 1997 is going into their vault to bring you a blast from the past. It's the 1998 CIF Division I Championship game. Long Beach Poly had already established themselves as a force to be reckoned with, but modern day's Matt Budigood was out to prove that the Monarchs could march on both sides of the field. High school football classics, modern day, Long Beach Poly, Sunday at 8 on FSN West 2. We are tied at uh, 13 at halftime. Uh, both the quarterbacks have uh, thrown the ball, and they have uh, thrown the ball for positive yardage and many positive yards. You see the rushing yards, Tulsa 30, Hawaii 78, and you just don't see that. Hawaii leading in rushing. Then the passing yards, 172 to 155, and then the total offense, 250 for Hawaii, 185 for Tulsa. Penalties, Hawaii has been penalized eight times for 84 yards in the time of possession. Tulsa with the ball uh, about seven minutes more than, uh, than uh, Hawaii. The way this first half has gone, it seemed that when we began, Hawaii really started well. They started well offensively, they started well defensively, but you knew 
that as the first half went along, Tulsa was going to adjust. They have a coaching staff that knows what they're doing, too. So as the first half went along, I think Hawaii started to stumble a bit on both sides of the ball. I agree, Jim. Hawaii came out, they ran the ball, the first two plays. They really caught Tulsa by surprise. But the coaching, just the coaching staff for Tulsa adjusted. And you got to really give credit to Tulsa's defense and Hawaii's defense. The offensive, offenses have marched up and down this field. But the defenses, especially when they get in the red zone, they've kept the offensive, for the most part, out of the end zone and made them kick field goals. The biggest play of the uh, first half was this play as uh, Timmy Chang threw low and it was uh, picked off by uh, Owens and Owens then found the lane that he wanted and he rampaged for 75 yards and the touchdown, his third touchdown reception of the year. It was Timmy Chang's sixth touchdown pass and Caleb a Blankenship on a crossing pattern later in the first half. Uh, for uh, Tulsa, chased down by Tanabasa Moy, and then Killian getting his first rushing touchdown of the year as he broke into the end zone. 13 13. You know that the coaches talk to their players about adjustment. You know that the coaches talk to their players about Elon and Verve and not giving up and playing till the last second at halftime. Which team has the advantage, do you think? I think Hawaii does. At home, Hawaii's got the huge advantage because it looks to me like the coaches have adjusted and they're trying to help the defensive line out, which in my opinion is the weakest part of this Hawaii team because of the inexperience, because they don't have the guys that they're able to rotate in, the experienced guys. Hawaii's coaches have tried to help them up by blitzing the linebackers, blitzing, blitzing the corners to get pressure on the quarterback, not so much pressure on the defensive line in this game as in the first two games. So I think Hawaii's got the advantage. So when we come back, we'll get the second half underway. We are even halfway through this contest. Tulsa and Hawaii. Totally Football is your inside source for all pro and college gridiron news. The hardest hitting football show in the biz. Patrick O'Neill and our insider Jay Glazer break all the stories before anyone else. When I first broke it, people were telling me, yes, this is going to cause such a heated debate. We'll take you inside the huddle and behind the scenes for all the big skin action. Totally Football, weeknights on FSN. Introducing the Sports List. With Summer Sanders. The new show that counts down anything and everything in the world of sports. The most shocking upsets. The best sports heroes. The sexiest athletes. The biggest sports scandals. And, and much, much more. more. Hosted by Summer Sanders. Every night, a new list. Every night, a new argument. The Sports List. Weeknights on FSN. FSN West, the only sports network that puts Southern California fans first. The SoCal Sports Report. Hello, everybody. The nightly newscast dedicated to your hometown teams, scores, interviews, and highlights. So for fans, yeah. I'll tell you, nothing gets these people down. The Southern California Sports Report, nightly at 10. Where Southern California fans come first. FSN West. We're back at Aloha Stadium with Hawaii head coach June Jones. Coach, your team tied at 13 at halftime. Yeah, we didn't play very good football. Uh, you know, we had our chances again to make plays. We still haven't made them. It's like I told them, we've been here twice with a chance to win the game. Now we got to finish it off. You got to like your chances, though. It's uh, basically starting over here. Yeah, it is starting over. If we catch the football and we miss a lot of tackles in key situations, uh, we just got to clean those things up and hopefully it will do it and win. All right, coach, thanks a lot for stopping by. Okay, Russ. The second half, just moments away from beginning here at the Aloha Stadium, as you look at Steve Craigthorpe, he is the coach of Tulsa, and of course, June Jones, the coach of Hawaii. And there's James Killian. Killian just has grit. I mean, his team could be behind. It doesn't make 
a bit of difference to him. And he is the kind of quarterback that spreads his reputation and spreads what he wants people to think of him around, especially when he works in the community. In, in the community, he is so dedicated. And he has been tapped by the NCAA coaches as one of the real good guys. Right, and he's uh, he's on the Johnny Unitas Award list, the Davy O'Brien watch list, you know, and his second team all whack last year. So, you know, he's a good quarterback, and everybody knew he was a good quarterback coming into this game, and he hasn't disappointed. Uh, what is a disappointment is Chad Owens, he leads the WAC in receptions, 11.5 receptions a game. So far in this game, he's had that one big run, but only two receptions. So that's really far below his average. Yeah, not only does he lead the WAC, he leads the nation in uh, receptions per game with 11.5 coming in, and as you said, uh, Owens with only two catches for 85 yards and one touchdown. Fans looking for a family friendly game experience at Aloha Stadium can purchase tickets in the family zone, the newly created non alcohol area in sections V and double V. Contact the UH Athletics ticket office at 944 2697 for more information. That's 944 2697. Nine seven, or you can go on hawaiiathletics.com. Donnie Johnson and Ashlyn Davis are deep for Tulsa. And kicking off will be Justin Ayat. Tied at 13 as this college football Saturday comes to an end and has come to an end in every section of the nation except this one. Getting ready to kick off. And it will go to Ashlyn Davis at the goal line. Davis out to the 25 yard line, and it will be first down for Tulsa at that point. Now we will see how both teams have adjusted the Hawaii defense and also what Tulsa has started to turn the pages in their playbook. And they may be very deep in it at the start of the second half. We'll see. Well, like I said, I like what Hawaii was doing, blitzing the linebackers and the corners. I, I hope to do more of it. Uh, and uh, we'll see what Tulsa can do to adjust. So here come the Golden Hurricane. They come out with a uh, Euro Parish as a single setback. This is Parish. Weaves into the secondary and gets out to the 30 yard line, and we have a penalty fly. Tanabasa Moy, they're making the stop for Hawaii. So, again, on the play, about five yards. Illegal formation, offense. So, illegal formation on Tulsa, and that will bring the ball back. You know what surprised me about Tulsa in the first half is they didn't run the ball as much as I thought they would to set up the play action pass because Hawaii has certainly struggled mightily against the play action pass this year. And I thought Tulsa would run a lot more to set up that pass, that pass, that play pass, and they haven't done it. Louis Funga, number 99, has played his heart out again, especially in that first half and into the second half. I mean, he's put up with so many injuries. And he's in there at the start of the second half. Parrish and Dials are back with Killian. Ball is given it to Parrish, and Parrish goes nowhere. No gain on the play, and that'll be second down and 15. We're talking about Louis Funga, and he rises to the occasion and makes the tackle. Yeah, I, I, I was talking to him earlier this week, and he, he mentioned the cheap shot he got two weeks ago against Rice, and he's pointing to his knee, and I told him, man, all the injuries, injuries that you've had, now, if I were you, I'd be wearing every piece of protective equipment that was legally possible out there. You know, I'd look like a hockey goalie. And Fungus had two medical hardship years out of Waipahu. Second down and 15 for Tulsa. Hawaii showing blitz. They do not. Yes, they do. Killian gets away from one, but not 
another. And it looked like Tony Akbon. Tony Akbon gets his first sack of the of the season, I believe. He he was there first and he appeared out of nowhere. Boy, he came in fast. Akbon makes a nice move on the offensive tackle, gets in, and Killian just ducks under the tackle. So it, it appeared he was there so fast, it appeared to be a blitz, and it was not. It was Tony Akbon, the Nigerian. Third down, long yardage. Back to pass Killian again with time. Steps up in the pocket, eludes one, uh, but not another. Oh, he takes a hit. Big hit by Mel Purcell. Purcell just deposited Killian on the turf. But the Tulsa quarterback up jogging off. And when you talk to University of Hawaii players about Killian, they said, boy, you can really nail him. And when you do, he just gets right back up. Look at the hit by, by Purcell. Crowd reacting to the replay. Fourth down. And kicking his kindred, waiting for it, is Owens. Owens at the 40. Owens gets outside. Midfield. 40-yard line. Down the sidelines. He will score. Brilliant run. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, any flags? Any flag? No flags. Touchdown. Well, I tell you, he is just so gifted. He made at least three Tulsa players who had the tackle miss him. He catches the ball. He goes up into the, the pocket here. He go one, two, three, four. He just dances and jukes and then just finds a way to squirt through there. And then he turns on the jet and nobody's going to catch him. Good escort job by Omega Hogan on the special teams again. Ayat in to try the extra point. 66-yard punt return by Chad Owens. Ayat drills the extra point. And all of a sudden, it is now 20 to 13. Electrifying run by Chad Owens. Andy, you can cut the tension with a knife. Here we are. First up, the sporting group entry, a breed that originated in Europe. Oh, now this big fella's from the working group. Bet he's got quite an appetite. I'll bet he does, Andy. And here's a CRV, an extremely versatile breed. You find them on farms, ranches. And the city. Yes, of course, the city. And look at him responding to the crowd. Andy, there's a good look at the Honda CRV. And now for the toy group. Always a crowd favorite. Next week on the Best Damn Sports Show, period. The Philadelphia Eagles, Terrell Owens, Coach Mike Ditka, and guest host C.C. Sabathia. Plus, Billy Bob Thornton, Michael Strahan, and Where Are They Now with Jim Abbott. And Chuck Norris, the stars of Friday Night Lights, and Terry Bradshaw. Next week at 8 and 11. Whether it's major league or minor league, college or high school, there's a lot of baseball taking place in Southern California, and now there's a show to cover it all. The Southern California Sports Report's Totally Baseball, Mondays at 1030 on FSN West 2. It's IMAX, home of the funniest, freshest opinions in sports. Welcome back to my ongoing argument with the whole wide world. Every weeknight, Max takes on today's biggest names. IMAX, weeknights on FSN. Sixty-six yard punt return by Chad Owens earlier in the first half. Seventy-five yard pass catch and touchdown. So he's had another great night. Hawaii leading 20 to 13 here in the third period. Hayat kicks it off again. It will go to Davis deep in the end zone and he will not return it. So Chad Owens really electrifying the crowd because when that run started it appeared as if he would have just a, a modicum of a return just 
a few yards here, maybe there. And all of a sudden, he breaks to the outside, turns the corner with help from his teammates. And he just blazes up the far sideline for the touchdown. Now, Tulsa, a team that so far in this game has answered back. They have it at their own 20 as they begin things. Mills is flanked to the left, along with Colton. To the right, Blankenship. Killian throws, leaping catch. That is complete to Mills. And Mills is driven back by Kenny Patton. Patton with a pass interception in the first half. And we have a penalty fly. We'll see whether that's a holding penalty. Holding, number 56 offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. So the penalty moves the ball back to the 10 yard line. Jim Leahy along with Doug Violetti. Here uh, at Aloha Stadium, Colton to the far side along with Davis. Five wide receivers, empty backfield. Oh, he jumping around on defense, and we have a penalty flag. Apparently, a false start. The umpire called. Well, the ball can be snapped. False start. On a 71 offense. Ikaka Lama Francis has come in for Hawaii in that uh, defensive line, and he was a basketball player. And then he had back surgery. Yeah, and then earlier this week, I was talking to him. I asked him how his back was, and he said it's fine, but he broke his thumb last week. Yeah. So he's got his thumb all wrapped up, but he's still playing. So the penalty moves it back to the five-yard line. First down, very long yardage. And another penalty flag. Apparently, another false start. This could be on Jeff Parrott. Well, the ball can be snapped. Ball start, number 78, offense. Half the distance, still first down. So three plays, three penalties, three different players. And if you look at the left side of your screen, there's a the tackle. Perret just kind of moves a little, nudges a little before the ball is snapped. And that's three plays, three offensive linemen with penalties. So right now it's like a virus is spreading. First down, they have to go all the way out to the 30 for the first down. Ball is given to Parrish, and he weaves to the six. Line of scrimmage being the three-yard line. Kaika Kernan in to make uh, the tackle. And you see that a lot when teams, their offenses are pinned up against the goal line. They come out running most of the time. They, that way it's safe. They avoid the, the safety. If they don't, they don't want the quarterback throwing from the end zone. If he gets sacked, it's a safety. And then they give themselves room for a punch if they don't make the first down. Darrell Wimberley now has come into the game, and they come out with five receivers. Killian backs up into the end zone. Chase out of the pocket. Oh, there's holding, no call. With it is Killian trying to get outside, and he bumps out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Big hold there on Mel Purcell. But the umpire was turned around and did not see it. Everybody on this side of the stadium, however, did. Hawaii leading 20 to 13 with 10.06 left to play in the third period. We're, we're going to take a look at this. Just, nobody's open. Four wide receivers. Hawaii's defense doing good job in coverage and an absolute hold on Mel Purcell. So it is third down and 14. They come out with four wide receivers. And. I can't believe it. Another penalty fly. Sideline warning. Tulsa. So Steve Craig thought the same. All the things going on in the world. <laughs> you were telling me <laughs> that we're too close to the sideline? Yeah, are you kidding? <laughs> Uh, basically, he's trying to get the uh, Cragthorpe, the coach, to lay off of him. 
Third down 14. Tulsa has had the knack of coming up with a big play on third down. Let's see if they do it here. Killian back to pass. Throw sideline pattern. That is complete. Lono Manners grabs Blankenship. And he spins him to the turf at the 21. That'll bring up fourth down. And Tulsa will have to punt it away. So good defense by Hawaii. Aided, of course, by the penalties. I mean, there was an epidemic of penalties. And Tulsa was really backed up inside their five-yard line. So Chris Kindred, who punted three times in the first half, will punt again for Tulsa. And guess who's back to receive it? Chad Owens. There's the punt. Owens will not touch it, and the ball goes out on the 46-yard line of Hawaii. So a 31-yard punt. Hawaii will have excellent field position when we come back. The Warriors leading the Golden Hurricane 20 to 13. Count the ways you win with the Hyundai Accent. Number one, the reliable Hyundai Accent is the number one seller in its class. Two, the Accent's many features include standard front side impact airbags for added safety. And three, award-winning quality that lets Hyundai offer America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. Don't buy another car before you check out the Hyundai Accent starting at just $95.44. With Hyundai, you win. Get the fuel-efficient Hyundai Accent starting under $10,000 at your local Hyundai dealer. Mark McGuire. They call him Big Mac. And guess what his favorite hamburger is? The Carl's Jr. $6 burger, made with 100% Angus beef. Because some guys don't like eating a pound of bread to get a half pound of meat. This weekend on Fox NFL Sunday. We go behind the scenes with Michael Vick and show you the crazy life of a superstar. Plus, Ray Lewis goes 10 yards with TV. Then, two of the league's most legendary franchises meet in an NFC Classic. Kurt Warner and the Giants take on Brett Favre and the explosive Packers. Fox NFL Sunday, this weekend presented in high definition. Click on BigOnnetCandies.com or call 1-800-93-555-10 to order your favorite treats. Big Island Candies from the Big Island of Hawaii. Timmy Chang, 7 for 22, 172 yards, one touchdown. And his completion percentage of only 31. Chang looking throws. That is complete to Rivers. Juggles just a bit. And down he goes. The line of scrimmage being the 48-yard line. And he advances it to the 46 of Tulsa in the first half. Hawaii had eight drops. So that statistic continues to really affect the way they can move the ball. And you see those numbers by Timmy Chang, eight completions out of 23 attempts, 179 yards, are very unchanging like numbers. In motion is Owens as they overload the right side. Jimmy Chang to throw. Steps up. Throws long. Out in front is Owens. And the ball is overthrown. And Hawaii's had trouble all year long with the deep patterns because of the way that the defenses are aligned against it. They'll give short patterns, but not the deep one. And Owens going to the sidelines to take a break after that long run. He was open. The ball just was a little overthrown. Uh, but that's good for for Hawaii bad for Tulsa the deep balls are open so Tulsa then has got to be very aware that they got to maintain uh, their defense deep and it's going to hurt them when Hawaii throws all their short stuff up front third down and four Brewster has come in replacing Keepy in the backfield Chang four man rush steps up in the pocket throws over the middle throws it high it was intended for Paul Mele and he was open on the crossing pattern. That ball thrown too high by Tim Chang. So Hawaii, with great field position, cannot take advantage of it. And on fourth down, they will punt it away. Milne has come in to punt. Milne has punted for 46, 36, 42, and 38 yards. He started the game seventh 
in the whack and punting, waiting for the snap from center. Landrum is deep. There's the punt. Oh, excellent punt. It'll take a while to come down, and it will come down on the one-yard line. And it, oh, they cannot keep it out of the end zone. Oh, they, they had a golden opportunity that time. But it goes as the touchback, 46-yard punt. And that was Bryce Rungi, the, the long snapper, going downfield and uh, almost had it on the one-yard line. It bounces back, and right there you get it, you fall on it, do something, do anything to keep it out of the end zone. He yeah, tried, you tried to bat it, but first thing to teach you about a football is that it bounces funny. And that's exactly what happened that time. First down for Tulsa on the 20-yard line. They come out, triangle wide receivers to the near side. Killian looking over the middle. Chased out of the pocket. Killian into the secondary. And he's able to come out over the 25 to the 27-yard line where he's swallowed up by the green shirts. Lono Manners coming up from the secondary to make the stop for Hawaii. And Killian was looking for his tight end all the way. The tight end covered closely by Watson Hohuli, who then comes up and helps on the tackle. So Hawaii's defense doing a, a really good job here in the third quarter of uh, protecting against the pass, covering the receivers, and rushing the passer. Eight-yard gain on that scramble by Killian. Killian on a sweep with it is Landrum. Landrum runs into Tony Akbon. And Tony shuts off the light. <laughs> and you saw how Landon just kind of slowed down because there was nowhere for him to go. But Tony Akbon, six foot seven. Never played football in Nigeria. Came to the University of Hawaii as a basketball player. And I tell you, he's out there in a hurry. He is the only player in the NCAA, I'm willing to wager, that with his villain has hunted lions. The Kaika Alama Francis has also come into the game. So Akban is on the right side and Alama Francis on the left side in that defensive line. Third down, Killian is sacked. Kapanui, Chad Kapanui out of Honolulu and Roosevelt. The Rough Rider. And Hawaii blitzes two linebackers this time, Kapanui and Lincoln Manutai. They get there at the same time. Killian fakes the throw downfield, doesn't have enough time to make a pass, and goes down. So another sack of Killian by that uh, Hawaii defense. Kindred into punt. Chad Owens standing on his own 42-yard line. There's the punt. Owens. Backing up inside the 40, inside the 35, takes it on the 34-yard line, and down he goes. Excellent play that time by Oliver Fletcher. There's a flag. A flag down. Hawaii may have substituted late. So illegal substitution. We'll see what the call is. And whether it is or isn't, it's the second time on a kicking, uh, on the kicking team that they've run people in and out late. And that's not good. Not at this point uh, in the season. Robert Cameron is the official, and they are still talking it over. Now they're calling the Hawaii captain over. Illegal procedure, uh, offsetting penalties, illegal procedure against Tulsa. And also a penalty against Hawaii. Chad Owens is uh, pointing. What should I do? The illegal formation by the kicking team is declined. Holding by the receiving team. Post scrimmage kick enforcement is accepted. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. So they will enforce the penalty. The penalty on the Hoyer. What? <laughs> what happened to the offsetting? Offsetting penalties. penalties. They will. They will enforce the penalty on Hoyer, and since Hoyer declined the other penalty, 
I guess they declined it because they want the ball. I don't know whether they had that option, but apparently they do. They're still trying to find the right spot of the ball here. And the uh, first down marker guys, they, they must be paid by the hour because they're not moving quick at all. Well, they just want to make sure that the mark is set before they move. <laughs> That's true. First down. And the ball at the 24. Ball is given to Brewster around the corner to the 30. Brewster swallowed up. White shirts angrily throwing to the field turf. Ledette was there. Nick Bunting also. Ledette, number 27. Bunting. Uh, number 41 and Randy Duncan on top nice run by Brewster I tell you when you have a guard like Samson Satelli number 64 they pull him from the left guard position to kick out the defensive end when you have somebody as as athletically gifted as Satelli you run that play a lot and it's successful a lot a high percentage of the time Chang only 178 yards in passing in this game Chang, that may be a, a legal procedure on Hawaii. We have seen penalty flags. Before the ball can be snapped, false start, number 84, offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. Flags have been thrown a total of um, 18 times on the part of both teams. Hawaii now has been penalized 10 times for 99 yards. And you know, they've got a new center. What it, what it could be is just a timing difference between uh, Moenoa's snap and uh, Fa'abi's snap. But Rivers twitched that time and uh, got the flag. Second down, ball comes back. And down goes uh, Chang on a bad snap. Yeah, that snap never got off the ground, and Timmy Chang did exactly the right thing. He didn't try to pick it up, he just fell on it and gave his offense the opportunity to uh, run another play. Now Hawaii is going backward the way Tulsa had trouble moments ago in this third quarter. Five minutes and 15 seconds left to play. Hawaii leading 20 to 13. Third down, 19 to go. And the ball is on the 11 yard line. Timmy Chang, quick pattern, complete to Rivers, looking for blocking. Dancing, dancing, finds a hole. 25 30, trying for the first down. He may have it. All the way out to the 35 yard line. That'll be close. 19 yard pickup. And it is a first down. Oh, key, key play for Hawaii. Watch the dance by Rivers. He catches his ball and Tulsa's defense is right there. Rivers just dancing around, finds a hole, and the offensive lineman and the rest of his offensive teammates have the wits to make good legal, legal blocks to spring him. Randy Duncan finally twirled him down. It's first down at the 34-yard line. Chang gives the ball to Kali Kipi, 40. Kali Kipi out to the 42. That's a gain of eight. That'll be second down and two. Michael Ledette. Finally halted his progress. Good blocking Tala Isera and Samson Satelli. And Brandon Eaton from his right guard spot pull over. When you've got a big running back like Wes Kelly Kipi, you need to make big holes for him. And that time they did. Second down and two. The ball out to the 42 yard line. 409 left to play here in the third period. Hawaii leading 20 to 13. Tim Chang to throw. Steps up in the pocket caught at and gets back to the line of scrimmage. He may have slid forward for a yard. That will bring up third down and one. He was trying to go deep either to Owens or to Fumine. And number 95, Josh Walker makes a nice move on Inferrera that time. Comes upfield and ducks underneath. Oh, sorry, that's number 35, Cody Madison. Comes upfield and ducks underneath to make uh, they put the pressure on Chang. Third down, less than a yard to go for the first down. Komine is flanked to the far side. Along with Paul Melli. Brewster is back, replacing Kelly Ikipi. 
Chang looking, dancing, throws. That is complete. Rolling reception that time by Kumine. And for Kumine, that is his first reception of the game. He had his troubles in the first half with drops. But he is able to pick up the first down, keep the possession with three minutes and 10 seconds left to play in the third period. And you could see him when the ball was coming to him. You could see him focus and cradle that ball and go to the ground after he caught it. He wasn't taking any chances. He was going to catch that one. First down for Hawaii on their own 47 and a half in motion is own. Chang. They pick up the blitz. Throws. That is to Owens. That's complete to the 29 yard line. Owens turning back and catching that ball. 24 yard gain on another first down for Hawaii. Oliver Fletcher and Bobby Blackshire in double coverage. I'll tell you what, Tulsa blitzes. If Hawaii picks up the blitz, it puts the defensive backs in a bad position because of the skill of Hawaii's receivers. Timmy Chang finds the open guy. It happens to be Chad Owens, and they make a nice connection. Owens, three catches, 109 yards, and one touchdown. And Timmy Chang, now 11 for 28, 224 yards, and one touchdown. Kali Kipi has come back into the game, and running back in motion is Paul Mele. Chang looking, throws long, wide open, Paul Mele, touchdown! Hawaii's offensive line doing a terrific job there of stoning everybody up front. Pomele runs an out route, and uh, number four, Bobby Blackshire is just not there, nowhere to be found. Ayad in to try the extra point. 29 yard touchdown. Pass. It is up, and it is good. It was a high snap, and Kirk Milne was able to reach up, put it down, and place it for Ayat. 27 to 13, Hawaii leading. We believe the line between on road and off-road should be almost imperceptible. The luxury utility vehicles at your Southern California Lexus dealer. Monday on the Sports List. The Immaculate Reception. The Catch. The Music City Miracle. Which place dance as the greatest in NFL history? Find out Monday on the Sports List. The year was 1988. DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince win a Grammy for Best Rap Performance. Michael Douglas wins an Oscar for his role as Gordon Gecko in the movie Wall Street. The Lakers defeat the Pistons to win the NBA championship. The Dodgers beat the A's to win the World Series. And USC quarterback Rodney B, suffering from the chicken pox, rises from his hospital bed to lead the second-ranked Trojans against Troy Aikman and the sixth-ranked Bruins of UCLA. We live a classic crosstown showdown, Tuesday at 8 on FSN West. This week on FSN Across America, he left the ranks of the NFL to return a college program to prominence. Pete Carroll discusses the road to building a national champion. FSN Across America, Sunday. Hawaii scoring drive, four minutes and 29 seconds of elapsed time. 76 yards in eight play, 29 yard. A touchdown pass to Se Pomele. For Pomele, that is his second touchdown pass of the year. Receiving, he caught one against Florida Atlantic. And for Timmy Chang, his seventh touchdown pass of the season, second of the game. Here's Davis. Davis is open at the 30. Davis outside at the 40. Down the sidelines and finally run out of bounds by Omega Hogan, who saved the touchdown. 51 yard return. And one of the uh, Tulsa players is still down. Watch this return. Another broken tackle. And then Ayat tries to force him to the sidelines. And there is Hogan 
finally getting the job done. That's all, that is a return all the way to the 40-yard line. And, and, and again, special teams come up, and they have trouble. And what was different that time is the wind caught the ball, and the ball came down on the 10-yard line. The, the other times that Ayad has kicked it off, they've come down on the goal line or in the end zone. This time, it comes down on the 10-yard line. He gets a running start when he catches the ball, and he's right in behind his wedge, and uh, that's how that happened. Tommy Johnson, number 89, is down for Tulsa. And they're looking at his shin or his ankle. And hopefully it is not serious. Boy, you hate to see this. Donnie Johnson, one of the um, big receivers for Tulsa. Away leading 27 to 13. Now, Tim Chang. 12 for 29, 253 yards, two touchdowns. And when Cole Milley caught that touchdown pass, Doug, I mean, he was running in a verdant, bucolic pasture. Yeah, they, they lost track of him. They didn't, you know, nobody was around him on that corner route. And when he came down with the ball, it was an easy stride into the end zone. So they're going to help Donnie Johnson off the field, we hope it is not serious. We do not like to see that happen to any any player. Two minutes and eight seconds left to play in the third period. Hawaii leading now 27 to 13. Tim Chang with two touchdown passes tonight, a 75-yarder to Chad Owens and a 29-yarder to Se'e Pro Mele. Owens also electrified this crowd with a brilliant, brilliant 66-yard punt return for a touchdown but here comes Tulsa again they have it at the Hawaii 40 yard line and they have the quarterback Killian triple wide receiver to the left in motion again comes Landrum Killian looking for Landrum now flares it out and with it is Parrish Parrish inside the 35 and is tackled from behind and he gets to the 30 an 11 yard pickup and a first down nice call by Tulsa the, uh, Hawaii blitzes the linebacker. The, the running back flares out to the side, and uh, C.J. Allen Jones is in there on the play. The, he gets the ball and he runs upfield. Now Leonard Peters has a chance to make the tackle, but Paris makes a nice break to the inside, nice cut, and he gets a few more yards for his team. Hawaii with a controlling lead now, 27 to 13. But Tulsa coming back. Brandon Dials, single setback behind Killian. Killian gives the ball to Dials, angles to the 25, gets to the 23. We've got another flag. There is one. There's a lot of litter on the field, but you have to look close, and yes, it is a flag. Ball start against uh, Tulsa. Tulsa. Now in penalties, it's been penalized nine times. Boy, the wind has really kicked up here lately, Jim. And if it comes down to field goals or something like that, it, you know, the wind might... Illegal formation on the offense. The slot man is neither on the line nor in the backfield. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot, still first down. That's a very good explanation of the call by Robert Cameron. Like I was saying, the wind kicking up here, if they have to kick a field goal, you got to take the wind into account, just like you would if you're uh, hitting a sandwich into a green. you got to take the wind into account when it's, big, when it's as gusty as it is right now. Darrell Wimberly has come into the game. He is one of the wide receivers. In motion again is Landrum. Killian looking like now checks off, throws. That is off Colton. And an excellent play by Louis Funga. And that is experience for you right there. Louis Funga was out there on the receiver screen. He knew what was, he read what was happening and got out there from his defensive tackle position to make a nice breakup. Take another look here. Here's Colton coming back. And the ball gets into the area and Louis Funga, well you talk about instant diagnosis. That's exactly what he did. Landon Keppel has come into the game and he has flanked now to the left. Landrum again in motion. Killian being chased. Now throws it. It is incomplete. Boy, you talk about the pressure. Here came Tony Akpan. 
I tell you, Hawaii is bringing the house. They blitzed seven guys that time. And Killian still was able to get the pass off. So Akman trots out. Killian that time tried to throw it into a, into a crowd. I'm sorry, Hawaii blitzed three guys. And brought eight rushers, you know, seven rushers. Landrum, Davis, and Wimberley are flying to the far side. So the near side is Colton. Killian steps up in the pocket. He has running room. Killian to the 30. Goes around Kapanui and either slips or succumbs on about the 28 yard line. That is short of the first down. And after bringing three guys on a blitz, Hawaii then rushes only four, sends every, everybody else back in coverage. So nobody was open. Killian forced to, to scramble that time. So here's Brad DeVault on fourth down. This will be a 45 yarder. Angle from the left. It is placed. It is kicked. Line drive. It is good. Not a high kick at all, but just high enough to get over the crossbar. Three points have been added, and it's 27 to 16. Hawaii leading with 23 seconds left to play in the third period. Let's go down to Russell Yamanoha. At Tulsa receiver Donnie Johnson receiving medical attention on the Tulsa sideline. They're checking the outside of his left ankle. He's trying to give it a go, but it looks like he could be out of the rest of this ball game. Thanks, Russ. Yeah, not good news for for Johnson. And there you see Killian. Killian talking with coach Steve Craigthorpe. So 45 yard field goal by the vault. Ross Dickerson Hawaii has been on the field for quite a while the uh, kickoff receiving team and now Tulsa trots out. Gerard Tracy to kick for Tulsa and Dickerson again deep. Wind continues to be brisk, but that is up here on the press level, down on the field. You don't really know what effect the wind will have. Dickerson drops it, picks it up. Dickerson out over the 22, about the 22. Ross Dickerson making the return. Dickerson from another player from St. Louis School. Hoy is replete with players from that educational institution. Here in Honolulu. It will be first down for Hawaii at their own 22 yard line. 17 seconds left to play in the third period. 27 to 16. Wes Kipi back with Tim Chen. Chen looking, throwing. Cole Miller, 32 yard line and out of bounds. Very close to the first down. They say now he stepped out. Well, one official says the 30, but he's way on the other side. And they put it down just short of the 32. That is exactly where the first down marker is. And they give a first down for Hawaii. And Tulsa's defense, the defensive backs look confused. Hawaii and trips on that side. And they just lost a Pomele. They, nobody was around him when he caught the ball. The nearest defender was five yards away. So they come out with the same formation, only they flip flop. And it is on the right. Tim Chang throws for Owens. Good catch. And Owens dumped out of bounds as he gets to about the 42. That's just short of the first down. So Owens with another reception. Bobby Klink was on one side. He uh, chased Pomeli out. Now he's on the other side of the field uh, to chase Owens out. Klink number 26 mentioned that he was the transfer from the University of Oklahoma and the ball is advanced out to just over the 41 yard line. Second down less than a yard to go. In motion is Paul Miller. Now he'll come back. 
Ball is given to Brewster. Brewster trying to get the first down. He does. Brewster wiggles, wiggles, and gets all the way to the 49-yard line. Gain of seven on the play. Seven tough yards for Michael Brewster. And that's the end of the third quarter. Hawaii leading 27 to 16. They are 15 minutes away from what they hope is their first victory of the season. We'll see. Totally Football is your inside source for all pro and college gridiron news. The hardest hitting football show in the biz. Patrick O'Neill and our insider Jay Glazer break all the stories before anyone else. When I first broke it, people were telling me, yes, this is going to cause such a heated debate. We'll take you inside the huddle and behind the scenes for all the big skin action. Totally Football, weeknights on FSN. California fans come first. FSN West. Central Pacific Bank sponsors the Loyalty Award by donating $100 toward the Central Pacific Bank Endowed Scholarship Fund for every touchdown Hawaii scores. So far tonight, the Warriors have scored a total of two, three touchdowns. And so far in the third quarter, Jim, Timmy Chang is seven for nine, 100 yards, and a touchdown. First down for Hawaii at the 49 yard line. Hawaii doesn't move. The ball is thrown to Komine. There was just all kinds of, and no flags. Hawaii's, Hawaii's line didn't move. It didn't look like Timmy Chang was expecting the ball either, so maybe Moinoa snapped the ball early because Timmy Chang bobbled the snap. Let me take a look here. Yeah, he definitely wasn't expecting it. Neither were any of the other offensive linemen. But he ad-libs his way, gets it to Komine, his second reception of the game. Jermaine Hope halted his progress, gained him a play close to eight yards, second down. In motion again, Komine. They overload the left side. Chang throws down the sideline to Komine. What a catch! Komine, who had trouble dropping the ball in the first quarter, comes up with a gem. And they call interference anyway, and he still comes away with the reception. <laughs> the ball was thrown right at the defender's back, and Kumine went over it to get it. Number seven, Jermaine Hope is Pass in interference on the defense. The result of the play, field the first down, the penalty's declined. Number first seven, down. number seven, Jermaine Hope is in tight coverage here on Kumine. So he's running downfield, stride for stride with him, but when the ball is thrown, Kumine has to come back for it. And when he makes that move, Hope runs into him. Kumine still catch. makes a catch. What a, a catch. catch. I mean, he caught that ball right in front of the face mask of Hope. So Timmy Chang goes over 300 yards in this game. That's the 30th time in his career. 30. And he has passed for more than 300 yards in a game. First down for Hawaii. On the 22, the ball is this time thrown, uh, thrown wide. It was intended for Komine. Jermaine Hope covering on the play. 
So the yards get tough once you get very close to that red zone. Wes Kili'ikipi. And Timmy Chang is really heading over to get a play from June Jones. I'll tell you, he's getting a lot of time. He's not being harassed in the pocket. He's making good throws. So Kili'ikipi has come in as the running back. Second down and 10. The ball at the 23. Quick pass. Complete to Rivers. And Rivers is just swallowed up by Michael Ledette. It was almost as if Ledette paid a debt. <laughs> yeah, he came over from his outside linebacker position, and he wasn't fooled there. Third down and nine, only a one-yard gain on that play. So here comes Hawaii again. Kalei Kipi back with Chang. Rivers gets to the far side, and in motion is own. Chang looking right. Now throws for the end zone. It is incomplete. Diving attempt by Paul Milley. Or was it Owens? It, it was Paul Milley. See how the numbers fold up in right. the back sometime? Paul Milley or Komini, either one of them were open. The ball was just a little overthrown. Otherwise, it would have been a touchdown. So that'll bring up fourth down. And here comes Justin Ayat. Ayad has kicked in this game two field goals, one a record time 56 yarder. He has also hit a 28 yarder early in the game. Ball is kicked. This is a 39 yarder, and this is perfect. So it is 30 to 16. Hawaii leads with 13.56 left to play in the game. Justin Ayat has been superb. At Lexus, we're obsessed with making cars that handle and perform like no others. In this pursuit of perfection, we've also developed a camera which aids in negotiating the occasional obstacle to the rear. See your Southern California Lexus dealer. Once and for all. The greatest is about to leave his mark. It's the Poker Superstars Invitational. For the first time in history, the eight greatest players gather to finally answer the question, who is the world's best poker player? No amateurs, no jokers, no mercy. Learn from the masters. The Poker Superstars Invitational, tomorrow, only on FSN. FSN West 2, home of the high school football game of the week since 1997, is going into their vault to bring you a blast from the past. It's the 1998 CIF Division I Championship game. Long Beach Poly had already established themselves as a force to be reckoned with, but modern day's Matt Budigood was out to prove that the Monarchs could march on both sides of the field. High school football classics, modern day, Long Beach Poly, Sunday at 8 on FSN West 2. 39-yard field goal by Justin Ayat, his third of the game. One minute and 27 seconds of elapsed time. Hawaii leading 30 to 16. Covey Jackson is deep. Number 28, first time that we have seen him on the field. And the kickoff will go to Ashen Davis, two yards deep in the end zone. Out he comes to the 10. He's in trouble, breaks one tackle, and then is finally spun to the turf at the 16-yard line by Ikaika, excuse me, Ikaika Blackburn. You see Timmy Chang talking to Paul Miller. And you see the difference when the kickoff goes into the end zone versus coming down on the 10-yard line. The return man doesn't have time to get up behind his wedge. So that's on Hawaii's uh, kickoff team there to make a nice tackle. So here comes Tulsa. Trying to play catch up now. They trail 30 to 16. Your old Parrish single setback behind the quarterback Killian. 17 for 32, 171 yards in this game. Landrum again in motion. Killian throws. 
That is incomplete. It was intended for Mills on a crossing pattern. Tanabasa Moy covering on the play for Hawaii as you look at um, Killian. Big, big upset as La Tech beats Fresno State in the WAC. That's the first loss for Fresno State. They were thinking they had delusions of grandeur, perhaps. They were thinking BCS. Some of the other scores around the country and games already completed. This is the last one. Second down and 10. The ball at the 16. Ball is handed off up the middle, and with it is Parrish. And Parrish is able to carry the ball out close to the 25-yard line. Nice draw play by uh, Tulsa. Hawaii came with a blitz, Elamimian blitz on the on a play previous previous play and this play too he blitzes right into the hole and misses the running back right there you see and then he goes back and gets involved in the tackle third down and two from the 25 Killian rolling Killian is hit and he kind of elongates and gets out to about the 26. And we'll see on third down whether he had enough for the first down. Ikaika Kernan able to come across and figure everything out. That is enough for the first down. Ikaika Kernan playing with an injured elbow, had ligament damage, I believe, in that elbow. And, uh, of course, they don't tell you how serious it is, but he's wearing a brace on the elbow. And also, Tanobasa Moy started the game with an elbow injury. And you had to realize, boy, you know, if these two have to play with elbow injuries, just how effective are they going to be? They have been very effective. First down, Chile. Sideline pattern that's complete. The Mills is tackled immediately after a short game. Riding him out of bounds was Lono Manners. Garrett Mills out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. First team all whack. He is fifth in whack receiving. And he has caught a pass now in 20 straight games. Second down and about seven and a half. Now you see Killian's numbers. Brandon Dials and Ewell Parrish are back there with him in the shotgun. Double wide receiver is to the right. Ball is handed off to Parrish. He was slowed up in the backfield, but he was able to get his feet under it. Lono Manners finally halted his progress, and the ball is out to the 33 yard line. You know, and the Hawaii defenders were there. They just didn't make the tackle. Uh, when he got the ball, Kernan was there, and he just didn't jump forward and make the tackle. And then, uh, he went for the running back made the extra yardage. 14 carries, 54 yards now for Parrish. Third down, another third down throw. Third, about three and a half. Carrying the ball again is Killian, and Killian is spun to the turf by Tony Akpan. Yeah. He became a Nigerian whirling dervish that time. <laughs> And Akban doing a good job of stretching the line of scrimmage, working laterally, then sticking his big arm out there, getting a hold of Killian and bringing him down. Chris Kindred is in the punt for Tulsa. An excellent play by Tony Akban. Tony with that uh, gregarious personality. The eternal smiler waiting for it as Owens. It's kind of knuckleballed up takes a bounce it is grabbed by Owens and he steps out of bounds around the 30 yard line so it will be first down for Hawaii with 11 12 left to play in the game and Hawaii leading 30 to 16 over Tulsa 41 yard punt and no return as you look at Tony it's back it's bigger than ever it's the Toyota tent event Get great introductory deals on Toyota's best-selling cars. Get a zero-drive-off lease on a new 05 Camry. Then pay only $2.59 a month for 36 months. Or buy a new Camry with one-nine financing. There's even $500 back on any new 05 Corolla. Or two-nine financing on any new 05 Corolla. 
the Toyota Tenet at end soon. See your Toyota dealer today. Hey, taxi! So where's the best place to get a Jack Daniels in this town? No problem. Bar. It's IMAX, home of the funniest, freshest opinions in sports. Welcome back to my ongoing argument with the whole wide world. Every weeknight, Max takes on today's biggest names. IMAX, weeknights on FSN. Tonight on the Southern California Sports Report, an absolutely amazing day as the Dodgers and Angels not only make the playoffs in the same year for the first time ever, but the way they do it, unbelievable. Tons of coverage coming up next. Eleven twelve left, 30 to 16, Hawaii leading Tulsa. And Hawaii starts this drive on their own 29 yard line. Owens and Rivers are flanked to the far side. Komine and Poe Melli to the near side. And Kili Ikipi back with Chang. Chang looking. Throws that is complete to Rivers. And he's able to get it out to the 40 yard line. And then they stack him up there. There'll be some bravado going on between both teams. An 11 yard gain, another first down. Nick Bunting. And that was time, the first one to him. Yeah, and again. Tulsa rushing four guys, everybody else back in the zone, doing the same thing that Hawaii's two previous opponents have done it successfully is go back in the zone. Hawaii, though, this game is a lot more, is showing a lot more patience and is a lot more successful against that zone defense. First down at the 40 yard line for Hawaii. Chang steps up, steps up. Throws long, and that is incomplete. Tried to go up the far sideline to Se'e Promele. And running right with him was Bobby Blackshire. Oh, excuse me, Owens. And that time, Tulsa came up, and they looked like they were going to send five guys, six guys rest, and they dropped everybody at back. That time, the corners were in man coverage, and Chang had the time to throw the ball. Just was good coverage. Good coverage by Tulsa's cornerbacks. Second down and 10 from the 40. They come out with the double wide receivers. Now in motion comes Owens. And Jeremy and Ferreira, I believe, with the false start. Another penalty. Before the ball can be snapped, false start, number 74. Offense, the five yard penalty, still second down. 11 penalties for 108 yards. And you hate 103 yards, I should say, excuse me. Now, Jeremy Inferrer, one of those special guys, started as a true freshman last year for Hawaii. Starting tonight at right tackle. Just moves a little too early. Second down and 15. Chang to throw again. That is complete to Owens. Owens, they ride him to the turf as he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. And we have another penalty flow. Maybe, it may be face masks the way that they were struggling with Owens. Covering on the play was uh, Blackshire. You see the time, 10 minutes and 30 seconds. This is another one of those long games as we started just after six. Incidental face mask by the defense. That's a five yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat second down. Well, you're going to see Owens running with the ball. He gets tackled. And he starts asking for the face mask before he, the play's even over. Receivers do that, you know. They, they have instant recognition of violations. 
second down and three. Ball at the 47. Sideline pattern for Rivers. Rivers was, uh, I mean, shadowing Rivers was Jermaine Hope. Ball was thrown high. Yeah, and that time Hope was in man coverage. Did a nice job. He was right there with uh, Rivers all the way and when the uh, ball was thrown. He was just really good coverage. And a high ball by Chang. Mentioned the, before that Chang went over 300 yards again, the 30th time that he has been able to throw for more than 300 yards in his career. He's being blitzed. Oh, he gets nailed. Nobody picked up the blitzer at that time. And it was Clint Roundtree. Roundtree just, I mean, it was a fast, fast on ramp to the freeway. And I talked about Roundtree over. He's bouncing around, blitzing. He's ever, he comes through clean because the running back is on the other side of uh, Timmy Chang, not able to get there and just. And Timmy Chang gets hit from the backside. So fourth down, Hawaii will have to punt it away. Round three last week against South West Missouri State had a 41-yard interception for a touchdown. And that is a sack. That's only the third sack of the year for Tulsa. Punt by Milne. Bounces inside the 15-yard line and will go out right at the 15-yard line. 45-yard punt and no return. 9-0-9 left to play in the fourth quarter. Hawaii leading 30 to 16. rooms from 29 to 299 book your trip with the vegas experts at vegas.com now vegas.com it's who you know heinrich yeah i'll be right there and they've left little room for compromise headlights that turn on curves impressive RX from Lexus. They are waiting for you. Continuing to put the world on notice. You told your girlfriend she couldn't move in. You didn't want furry covers on your toilet seat. But your girlfriend can cook a mean breakfast. Maybe furry covers aren't so bad. The Loaded Breakfast Burrito, new at Carl's Jr. Without us, some guys would starve. 32-16. Timmy Chang now in his career, 13,799 yards. And he is second as he has passed Philip Rivers now, second in the history of the NCAA in passing. Killian throwing long up the sidelines. That is incomplete. Excellent coverage. It was intended for Colton. Running, running right with him. Or Zillamimian. If he gets open, he gets okay on switch. On switch. If he gets open, he gets open. But he's gonna be open all the time because he got a he got an option to go high or he's gonna snap. Second down and ten if you look at uh, Timmy Chang. Ball up the 15-yard line from the shotgun this time. Killian. High snap, quick pass. That is complete to Landrum. And Landrum doesn't get any progress. And they're able to string him out, and Lono Manners gets him. And Lono Manners does a terrific job starting here tonight, 
as a free safety, fights off the block, comes forward and uh, makes a nice play on the receiver. Just a really nice uh, job of getting off the block. Chief Craig Thorpe, again looking at this uh, second year as uh, when uh, June Jones came in 1999, I mean, he just turned everything around. Craig Thorpe did that last year. The second year is when they had trouble. Killian directing traffic now throws. That is, is it incomplete? I believe it's incomplete. And the ball hit the ground. Well, Hawaii blitzes five guys. Matt Funga comes free. Almost gets it. The, the, uh, sorry, that's Funga. And then Killian, with his athletic ability, rolls out and fires a ball down there. That, that hits the ball, hits the ground first. The Landrum almost comes up with the, with the reception, but it, it hit the ball in between his arms. It hit the ground in between his arms. So the official's right on it. That'll bring a fourth down. Fourth down. And into punt is Chris Kindred. Owens is standing at midfield. For all intents and purposes, Hawaii should end up with excellent field position. Here's Kindred's punt. Waiting for it, backing up, taking it on the 42-yard line, fumbling the ball, and the ball ends up in the hands of, uh, I believe it's Omega Hogan. And it is. 43-yard punt, two receivers, three yards. So Hawaii does have excellent field position with 804 left to play in the game and Hawaii leading 30 to 16 over Tulsa and Hawaii Hawaii dodged the bullet that time after the ball the ball that gets kicked high in the air and the wind we talked about the gusty wind it carries it almost to the sideline and uh, scorched the Hogan right Hogan is right there on the spot Omega Hogan is playing an amazing game in special team. Ball is given to Brewster, trying to turn the corner short side of the field, and he runs out of room as the white shirts gather him up, and we have more penalty flags flying. Holding on Hawaii. So Hawaii now penalized for their 12th infraction. Holding. Number 66 on the offense. 10-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Still first down. Brandon Eaton called for the holding. Also, it could have been face mask, I believe, here. There you see the face mask, see? You're right, Jim. It certainly was face mask. Would have been offsetting penalties. But we've seen offsetting penalties before in this game, and they weren't exactly offsetting. First down for Hawaii, first and 19. Ball is thrown to Owens. Owens comes back over the middle, but that's where the pursuit is. And Brandon Lohr leads the charge to wrap up Owens. And that was the same play that Owens caught earlier, that wide receiver screen that he ran 75 yards for with, for a touchdown. His linemen are in front of him when he catches the ball. He chooses to run the other way and gets tackled. Owens, oh, six receptions now for 130 yards in this game, including a 75-yard catch and run for a touchdown. Rivers is flanked to the left. Slotted inside of Rivers is Owens. Pomele inside of Homine to the right, and Owens comes in motion. Second down and 12. Chang, all day. All day. Throws around for Owens. He's got it at the 20. Owens out of bounds at, let's see where they put it, the 13-yard line. You give Tim Chang time like that. And Owens running up the sidelines. That pattern will ripen. And that ball was placed right there, right where it had to be. Credit Owens and Chang, but also credit the offensive line for giving Timmy Chang and Owens the time for that pattern to ripen. Owens. Timmy Chang hits him in full stride, right on the, uh, the perfect side. Nice pass, good catch. And you got to think for Bobby Klink, who's only eligible, this is his first week eligible, might be wishing he was eligible next week instead. 
quite an initiation. First down for Hawaii. They have it at the 14-yard line of Tulsa. Kali Kipi back in at running back. Komini now goes in motion. Triple wide receiver to the left. Up the middle comes Kali Kipi to the six-yard line. Cody Madison there to make the start. Cody Along Madison. with Randy Duncan from the secondary. Yeah, and at least one other Tulsa player. Once he gets through the, the defensive line, a single linebacker is not, it's going to have a really hard time tackling him one on one. It's going to be a gang tackle past the defensive line. West Kili Kipi coming into the game around 265. Six footer out of what a nine. Chang, quick pass. Owens, touchdown. Third touchdown pass of the game for Chang. His eighth touchdown pass of the season. And for Owens, his second touchdown reception. And Timmy Chang and Chad Owens are just on a different page. They've got a better connection than he does. He has a better connection with Owens than he has with any of his other receivers. He receives the ball and, and throws it to an area right away, knowing that Chad Owens is going to be there. Chad Owens is eight for 182 yards now. And two TDs. Ayat drills the extra point. And Hawaii leads now 37 to 16, but we have a penalty flag. And we'll see whether they will penalize it on the kickoff or whether they will re kick the point after touchdown. Two great plays in that drive. After the play, personal foul, number 63 on the offense, 15 yard penalty to be assessed on the kickoff. Guy LeCount called for the personal foul. So Owens up the sidelines, Owens into the end zone. Hawaii leading. It's back. It's bigger than ever. It's the Toyota Tent Event. The biggest truck clearance in Toyota history is going on now under the tents at all 58 Toyota dealers in Southern California. Get an incredible zero APR on any new 04 Tundra, including the all new double cab. Or choose 2,000 cash back on new 04 V8 Tundras and 1,000 cash back on new 04 V6 Tundras. The Toyota Tent Event ends soon. See your Toyota dealer today. When is a diet pill worth $153 a bottle? When you're more than 20 pounds overweight and every diet plan has failed. Now there's Leptoprin. Specifically developed for the significantly overweight, backed by a United States patent, a double-blind published clinical trial, and an ironclad 100% 30-day money-back guarantee. Leptoprin is simply the most powerful, clinically proven weight control compound available, period. If you're one of those people who constantly worry about five or six vanity pounds, Leptoprin is not for you. Leptoprin is much too expensive and much too powerful for the casual dieter. But if you're one of the millions of Americans who are 20, 30, 50 pounds or more overweight, you need Leptoprin. So when is a diet pill worth $153 a bottle? When it works, really works. Isn't it time you tried Leptoprin? Call 1-800-653-8231. 1-800-653-8231. Hawaii scoring drive, 55 yards. In four plays, a minute 59 seconds of elapsed time. Owens, a seven yard catch from uh, Chang. Owens, two touchdowns in the game, receiving and also a 66 yard punt return for a touchdown. Harvey Jackson and Ashlyn Davis deep for Tulsa. And kicking off from the 20 yard line will be Justin Ayat. He said the penalty was called on Kai LeCount for personal foul. And we stand corrected was on Michael Lafaele. Lafaele number 63. So here comes Ayak. Kicks it. Taking it on the 12 yard line is Davis. Davis to the 31. And he is halted abruptly there. Here's a graphic of Hawaii's offensive output in each quarter, and it shows how dominant they've been, a total of 468 yards. What that tells me is that Hawaii's offense, the receivers, the quarterback, 
they've gotten on the same page. They've attacked the zone. They're more patient. It also tells me that Hawaii's well, defense, it shows. Curly will be assessed at the previous spot and re -kick. It shows how much better Hawaii's defense has played tonight than it has in the previous two games. Another penalty. And as you look at Tim Chang, he's on the phone uh, to the press box. Tim Chang now with 378 yards in the game. And there is still five minutes and 53 seconds. So he, it was a um, false start against Hawaii. Encroachment. So now Ayat will have to kick off from the 15 yard line. Hawaii has been penalized 14 times for 132 yards in this game. 132. Yeah, that's pretty bad, Jim. That's absolutely terrible. Hawaii's got to do a much better job of limiting the amount of penalties they get in penalty yards. Hawaii well on their way to their first victory of the season. Kicking off again is Ayat driving back to the 14 yard line is Davis. And Davis fumbles the ball out of bounds. All right, that's just got to drive the Tulsa coaches nuts. They got Hawaii kicking from the 10 yard line, the 15 yard line. The ball comes down on the 15, and they, he drops it out of bounds. So it will be first down for Tulsa, and they will have it at the 13. 551 left to play in the game. And Hawaii up 37 to 16. Next week, Hawaii will take on Nevada right here at Aloha Stadium. Hawaii had so many buys over the month. They played only two games. The season seems to only be getting underway. Here comes the blitz, and Killian is hit from behind. Down he goes. They say his arm was in motion. It will be an incomplete pass. Illuminian. Illuminian came like the wind. And, and they've been bringing him all night, blitzing from the outside, looping around on the inside. He comes this time and Ho'ohuli and Illuminian. So they blitz a linebacker and a cornerback. I like what Hawaii's doing on defense, putting pressure on the quarterback, not, not giving him time to make any reads. That is the fifth sack and minus 50 yards. Now they say no, it was incomplete pass. So we stand corrected yet another time. Ball still on the 13 yard line. The motion is Landrum. He's been running back and forth all game, and there's another blitz. And Killian is deposited in the end zone. Coming right up the middle was Louis Funga, and he has played a spectacular game. He drops back and Kili Nahenoa, no, number 29, blitzes from the linebacker spot and just untouched. Killian didn't stand a chance. So Kili Nahenoa, no, number 29, with the blitz instead of Funga. Killian running out of trouble. Now throws. That is incomplete. And that ball was in, intended for Landon Keppel. This is just a different defense we've seen, Jim. They're blitzing guys, and the cornerbacks are still able to maintain coverage and not give Killian anybody to throw to. Five minutes, 38 seconds left to play in the game. And dropping back for Hawaii. Is uh, number 21. That's Jake's Jason Ferguson. Jason Ferguson is the burner. He can run. Comes up, takes it at the 43, and just gets necktied right there. And down he goes. Nick Graham with the absolute time of the play to make uh, to make the tackle. Perfect timing, a la Omega Hogan. I'll tell you, that's one of the rules that I think is kind of, uh, I, I don't like, that they got rid of the halo rule because guys are going to get hurt. Special teams are an area where a lot of guys get hold, hurt, and when they got rid of the halo rule, they allow guys to just launch 
and attack the, uh, the kickoff returner or the punt returner. Kainoa Kina has come in at quarterback for Hawaii. This will be his first snap of the season. 5'11", 186, a junior out of Tucson, Arizona. A transfer to Hawaii from Western Michigan. High snap. Ball is given up the middle to Kali Kipi. Still on his feet. Down he goes. Boy, he can. He is a load. Last year, Akina played in one game against Army. That was on the 22nd of November. He was one for one with one completion. Now, his father, Dwayne Akina, is an assistant coach at the University of Texas. So, Akina handing off to Kali Kipi that time. It is second down and seven, and the ball is up to the 45 yard line. So, Hawaii has put in their reserves. Lee keeping bulldozing his way across the 45 and he's able to move it up to about the 48 yard line Randy Duncan finally tackled him Timmy Chang 378 yards he was 22 for 43 three touchdowns and again no interception so three straight games he has not thrown an interception for this 2004 season and those are incredible numbers for Timmy Chang he's done a terrific job that's one of the things that people have been talking about were saying about him is that he's getting all these yards but he's throwing tons of interceptions because so far this season he's perfect in that in that uh, category third down and three Ferguson comes in motion Akina throws that is complete to Gerald Welch 35 down to the 33 yard line they say 32 now of Tulsa so Gerald Welch patiently waiting on the sidelines, a 19-yard game. And for Welch, that's his seventh reception of the season. Yeah, Gerald Welch, who's known for running really nice patterns and getting open, catches the ball there, leaps over defender, and goes down. So for Aquino, that is his first pass completion of the season. He is playing in place of Timmy Chang. With three minutes, 43 seconds left to play. Hawaii playing with their reserves here for the most part. Kali Kipi to the 26. So Hawaii's brought in their reserves. What they're also doing is running Kali Kipi, uh, taking time off of the clock. is something they, they weren't doing. The last two games in the fourth quarter, they, they uh, mostly predominantly passed. They didn't really mix it up. So this time, it's nice to see if they're running time off the clock. So the ball is put on the 27-yard line. Marcus Weems has come in now at wide receiver. He is flanked to the far side. Dickerson to the near side. Welch goes in motion. Kino. From the shotgun. He wants the touchdown. Throws it too long. It was intended up the near sideline for Dickerson into the end zone. It's through it long. Akina can throw. He's got an arm. That was a nice pass. Well, it was an overthrown pass, but yeah, you're right. It had some good zip on it. The second string offensive line still doing a good job of blocking and giving the quarterback time. So Brewster will come in now at running back to join the Kina. Weems, Welch, and Ferguson are flanked to the far side and to the near side is Dickerson. 241 left to play here in the game. Hawaii leading 37 to 16. Ferguson in motion. Ball is given to Brewster. Brewster to the 20. Brewster to the 10. Touchdown. 27 yard touchdown run for Brewster Michael Brewster credit that offensive line as they celebrate the joy of it. Well I talk about Samson Satelli and his skills as a pulling guard from his left guard position. Well he's out of the game and Hercules Satelli pulls from the left guard position makes a nice block to spring Brewster and then the rest is Brewster. He makes two guys miss on his way to the end zone. That's a four yard leap into the end zone by Brewster. His fourth rushing touchdown of the season. It is now 43 to 16 in favor of Hawaii with 233 left to play. Ball is placed down by Milne and Ayat drills it. Great team effort by Hawaii tonight. 
and they have scored 43 points. This is more into the comfort zone of Hawaii fans here at Aloha Stadium as we have another another penalty flag. Hawaii 14 penalties, 132 yards. And they get penalized on point after touchdown. It will be catharsis. Number 90, offense. 10 yard penalty, repeat the try. Tony Akban called for holding. Yeah, Tony Akban plays the end man on that uh, field goal unit, and that end man is responsible for blocking two guys. So he's got a hard job. 15 penalties, 143 yards for Hawaii in this game. Milne will be the holder. 30 yard extra point. Kick is up. And it is good. 44 to 16. James Killian is the MVP for Tulsa. He was 19 for 40, 174 yards. He had great resiliency. One rushing touchdown, his first rushing touchdown of the year. Chad Owens, 253 all-purpose yards, three touchdowns, 75-yard pass and run for a touchdown. Also a 66-yard punt return uh, for a touchdown. And another touchdown reception in the end zone from Tim Chang, seven yards away. 44 to 16. Hawaii's defense really has come alive yeah. in well, this game. We're talking about the players of the game. I was going to say there are a bunch of guys on defense that I would, I would say come in a close second and probably might even get some votes. You got Akban who showed up and played a terrific game, and then the cornerback Elamimian on the blitzes. Just real, really good plays tonight from uh, some of the defensive players, and you got Mel Purcell. All of those guys. Those um, most valuable players sponsored by the Bank of Hawaii. Ashland Davis out over the 15 to the 17 yard line. Where he is upended there. It will be first down for Tulsa with 228 left. So we said catharsis because Hawaii came in with two losses, but they weren't just two losses. They were two losses that stuck around because of the buys. Hawaii didn't play the week after the losses. And those two buys kind of worked on the team and it worked on the fans. So victory tonight will free them of that. And I tell you, Jim. And hopefully put them on the right road. After those two losses, this last week in practice, you, you, you could see the intensity level really pick up for univer the University of Hawaii. And they've got to keep it up. They cannot relax. They've got to be that way the rest of the season. Ball is given to Kobe Jackson. And Kobe is spilled at the line of scrimmage. So Nevada next week, then Hawaii will go on the road again. But this is a team that was sorely in need of a victory coming into the stadium tonight. And after the effort by a defense that seemed alive and almost pirate-like in the way they attacked the offense, they would swarm their blitzes. And it was an excellent effort. Second down and nine. Killian to throw again does. And that is complete. As uh, now Tulsa putting in some reserves. That's Landon Keppel again, number 21. 145 left to play in the game. Game is now about oh three hours and 40 minutes old. 345 could almost fly to California in the time it's taken to play this game. It has been a long game. Killian throws that's Blankenship and Blankenship is run out of bounds. That's Noah again. Noah out of Kaiser High School. You talked about how long the games, Hawaii games are always a little longer because the Hawaii offense throws so much and they never take time off the clock or hardly any time. When the, all, the, when the other team throws, like Tulsa has done tonight, they haven't run as much as I thought they would. Then the, the, the game becomes longer and longer and longer. Games last so long, you can almost 
feel the interest mounting on your savings account. <laughs> Not in my savings account. <laughs> Second down and five. Killian throwing again up the sideline. He wants Colton. And that ball bangs off Omega Hogan. There's another guy who's done a terrific job tonight on special teams. Two excellent tackles. And also the fumble recovery that Chad Owens dropped. Chad Owens is going to be running. I mean, uh, Omega Hogan is going to be running stride for stride. And right before the ball gets there, he turns around. Smart play. Because then he turns around and looks for the ball. And you can't call an interference on it. Third down and five. The ball at the 34-yard line for Tulsa. Even June Jones was feeling, I think, the frustration of it. I mean, his voice started to get hoarse. With it is Killian down the sideline, directing traffic. All the way inside the 30 to the 23-yard line. Killian turned the corner, and, and it seemed that Hawaii was going to treat him with... Oh, well, he's not going to go far, but he did. He just kept going. Mike Meggers will be called for holding, and that whole thing is going to come back. And I question them. The legal block in the back, number 66 offense. The 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat third down. So a right when block Killian, in the back. Oh, yeah, right when Killian starts to scramble, number 66 starts to hold. There you see him right there, grabbing onto the jersey. The referee right there to catch. I really question Tulsa leaving their starting quarterback in there in a situation like this. You see him running around the game, won't be won, and you risk injuring him by keeping him in there. Killian is just tough. I mean, this is the last time we're going to see him, and the last time we're going to see Tulsa as they go to Conference USA next year. Here's Killian again. Steps up, throws, that's a wobbler. And that goes out of bounds. That could be a little bit of uh, fatigue at this point with 36 seconds left to play. That'll bring a fourth down, 15 yards to go. I think he rushed that pass as good as Hawaii's defense has been tonight, blitzing, and they've been on him. When he rolls out, somebody's hit him a lot when he releases the ball. I think he thought somebody was behind him and he rushed that pass. Well, Hawaii coaches felt they were not that far off in delivering a win, and tonight they will. Jason Ferguson is back deep. Kicking his kindred. Excellent kick. Ferguson drifts back, takes it at the 26, bobbles for a moment, gets a block from Hogan. Trying to get around the corner, and they chase him down and swallow him up. Back at the 24, 50-yard punt and a minus three-yard return. 24 seconds left. Hawaii will take a knee, and that will be the game. Hawaii will be one and two on the season with Nevada. The Wolfpack coming in next week to Aloha Stadium. And Tulsa will drop to one and four. And they face that long flight back over the Pacific and then across the country to Oklahoma. So Brewster will go back as a kind of a safety and Aquino will drop to the knee and this game will be over and it is Hawaii wins it 44 to 16. It was a long time in coming. Hawaii started in early September. They win their first game in early October. So after a month of frustration, deep breaths, celebration, joy and catharsis. Time now for this uh, Red Star moment sponsored by Heineken. It's all about the beer Heineken. And it, of course, involves Chad Owens. Here's the catch. Owens able to find the lane, get to the outside, turn on the burners, and go all the way in for the score. And the most brilliant play of the night, this punt return. You see Hogan out in front of him. And then he is able to go down the sidelines and into the end zone, 66-yard punt return for Chad Owens. Owens with 182 yards in the pass receiving. And Owens also uh, with all-purpose yards, over 200. Final score, Hawaii 44 and Tulsa 
16. This has been a presentation of the Warrior Football Network from my broadcast partners, Doug Violetti and Russell Yamanoha. I'm Jim Lee. Good night, everybody. Malama Pono Kekahi. Kekahi.